Bam, back for another episode, number 59. We got a special guest today, UFC 155 lightweight contender, uh, Vincent Helpy Chow. What's going on, boy? How are you, man? Good. Mm -hmm. In the middle of fight camp and shit, we got a fight coming up. Yeah, I'm fighting June 1st. I just, I leave next Friday. Fuck. Wait, what's today? New York, today's right? Friday, huh? Yeah, today's Friday. Yeah, next Friday I leave. Um, New York? New York. I'm flying into Syracuse. The fight's in Utica. Have you fought there before? New uh, York? No, I've never even been to New York. Oh, shit. It's uh, in uh, a, a, a Adirondack. I don't even know how to say that fucking word. But, yeah. Oh, can I cuss? Yeah, you can cuss. Oh. You can throw the fuck Adirondack uh, Bank Center. Going out there fighting Greg Gillespie, New York's little undefeated prospect. Going out there to smash us, dude. Hand him his first loss and make New York hate me. <laughs> <laughs> dude, it's it's weird because uh, for those of you who know, don't know, like MMA was illegal in fucking New York for like a lot of years yeah. up until like recently. They just legalized it, I think, like a year or two ago, like not but, even that long ago. It's so fucking stupid to Maybe me, bro, years. that like a politician can be like, I don't like this shit so nobody can enjoy it. You know what I mean? Like that's so fucking like. I know. It shows how fucked up our and corrupt our system is, honestly. <laughs> but it's also stupid that, like, how the fuck are you going to tell somebody else what to watch? Like, yeah. if you don't like this shit, why, why are you telling? I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. It, straight, but, uh, that's straight communism, dude. It is. It is. It's a form of it. <laughs> it is. This dude, he, I saw, I was watching the video where the guy was arguing it online. And he's just like, it's two sweaty dudes rubbing on top of each other. And, this, this, and I'm like, dude, you just don't know what the fuck you're talking about, you idiot. Yeah. Like, it's a embarrassing. Lot of, a lot of people think that. We're just cavemen and they're smashing each other, you know. I mean, it is a little bit, but and it's like yeah. chess, bro. Fuck like, yeah, it's it a is. chess. It's a it's a it's a physical chess match, is what it is. And if you lose, you're getting fucked up. Yeah, and the, <laughs> the loss is physical pain. <laughs> yeah. and a big dent on your pride. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. That's what I wanted to talk about because like, the, the I've I've seen your journey since like fucking before you were in the UFC and all this shit, and when you were fucking handing out ass whoopings at the gym and shit, and uh, and like I just see how. It's like anything, bro. Anything fucking takes so much effort to to get to the highest level of, and it's like it's almost you got to you got to get through that bottom of the barrel shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? Dude. And I kind of wanted to go through like the journey. Like you started fighting. How old were you when you started fighting? Like regularly? I was twenty four. Gonna yeah, be twenty five. Yeah, I started kind of late, but uh, honestly, I've been like fighting my whole life. I've always just loved fighting, and like when I was a little kid. I used to love watching like blood sport and like kickboxer yeah. and the Rocky movies. Yeah. Like I love that shit. It's weird, bro. Cause I, I talked to Herman about that and, uh, uh, and we, it's that shit. It influences culture. Like all those fucking movies, those oh, Bruce yeah. Lee movies and all that shit. They, yeah. And Bruce Lee movies. I like Jackie Chan movies. Like I used to love all those old Kung Fu movies. Yeah. Like a lot of that stuff was a big influence on me. Yeah. And, 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 and yeah, good. La 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 la. And, um, <laughs> and it's, it, it's crazy. Like, Cause we we grew up watching this shit like fuck. I want to do that. Like that's that looks cool as fuck. Yeah, right. I got to try it too, but I'm like fuck. That shit hurts too much. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm good at this shit, bro. It does, dude. It does. But honestly, like, but you so you started training. Like, what made you start training? It was just fucking. Well, okay, it's actually a pretty good story. So, uh, when I was younger, I was dating this girl, um, and her dad was friends with this guy Mark Smith. His his name is Mark the Bear Smith. He was a fighter and a pro professional MMA fighter, and he lived in Simi Valley, which is where I where I grew up my teen years. Eight oh five. And uh, yeah, in the eight oh five. And um, I was at I was at her, not her dad's house, but her dad's brother's house. And you know, I think it was like Thanksgiving or something. And yeah. her her like Mark and her dad Mike, they were they're big dudes. Like. Yeah. They used to, and I was small then. I think I was like a buck forty, buck fifty. You know, I was yeah. a tiny. I was I was a punk. I was like yeah. in my early twenties. So uh, they're fucking with you. Yeah, they used to <laughs> fuck with me. They used to like sit on me and shit, and like you know what I mean. I try to come after them. They just hold me up on my head. You know, oh, I get fucking pissed. Fucking so, your ego. Uh, up. Yeah, dude. So one day, uh, I think I was at a party, and and I ended up beating up someone he knew, one of his friends, oh, who, he, who he thought was a, a tough dude. Why'd you Why'd you guys get in? A, did you That's what you did. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't remember what it was. I don't remember why we got into a fight. We were at a party, and, and but like I, that shit happened all the yeah, time. Yeah, it, it just happened. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. And it's not like I went out and picked fights, but like if there was an issue, and let's say, I'll give you an example. I had this friend Josh, who's a smaller dude, and I was at a party with him, my friend Curtis, and the same girlfriend at the time. It was when I was younger. That was bad news. And um, yeah, right. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> and then we're at a party, and I seen these two dudes who were who were obviously bigger than him, and they looked a little older, and I was yeah. a little older too. They were yeah. they were I think my age, maybe a year younger than me. And, and they were like talking him, to him, yeah. And I could tell, like, I'm I'm really good at reading people, so I could I saw the vibe, and I was like, Josh doesn't look like he's in a comfortable position. Yeah, shut so down. I went, yeah, I went over there, and I was like, I was like, hey, what's up, Josh? What's going on? Like, 
everything cool? And Josh is like, kind of like being a little timid. And these guys are like, who the fuck are you? Like, what the fuck? And I was like, well, I was like, you need to fucking relax. Yeah, you don't talk to me like that. Yeah, I, I ain't like, Josh. Yeah, I was like, listen, like, you guys don't need to be over here ganging up on this dude who's fucking half the size of both of you. Like, yeah. one of you guys, you know what I mean? Like, what's up? Like, yeah. that's fucked up. Oh, who the fuck do you think you are? I was like, I'm the guy who's going to fuck you up if you don't leave my friend alone. Like, <laughs> that's the way shit works around oh, here, you man. know what I mean? So then Pick the guy's the wrong fucking yeah, guy. Yeah, so then, and this is before I was fighting. I was super young, and so the guy's like, fuck that. So I remember, like, someone got in between us, and then the guy was, like, talking shit to me. So I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm done talking. I fuck. I remember just swinging over this guy and just thinking, like, my fist is coming like a meteor. I was like, man, boom. boom. And I hit this dude, right? The dude goes down right on his face. Bell. He starts snoring. So his friend, that's has, got, that feels good, bro. Yeah, yeah. Somebody out. I just started laughing. So his friend was, <laughs> his friend was kind of like sitting there, and then I'm like, "What's up, dude?" I was like, "You're next, motherfucker." I was like, yeah. "This guy better get, you better yeah. get out between us because you're, you might get hit." So then, uh, this is before YouTube, God damn it, man. I know. So then, uh, I wish I could turn my memories into videos. Bro. I have so many fucking <laughs> shits that I could just show people that people just wouldn't even believe. At the same my time, story. Though, bro, like the shit that even me, like growing up. We would all be in jail for all the shit we did growing oh, up. Oh, yeah, dude. I'd, I'd be dead or in jail if, if some things didn't happen the way they did sure, <laughs> when I was yeah. younger. But uh, so I hit the dude. And the, the second guy's like, he's kind of like using the crowd to kind of stay away from me. So yeah. I'm like trying to chase. I'm trying Hold to swim back. through people. Hold yeah. me back. <laughs> I'm trying to swim through people to get to this dude to like be like, like chase him down and give yeah. him a taste of his own medicine, you know? And then so I couldn't get to him. I'm like, whatever. Fuck you, chump. Like, go pick yeah. your friend up and like, fuck off. Yeah. You know? I mean, don't pick, on, don't pick on people smarter than me. Like, yeah. that's what you get. So then that dude's waking up, and then I'm standing there, and I'm talking to my buddy Josh. Oh, that's a fucked up feeling, too, to wake up from just like, Ugh. Yeah, not knowing what happened. <laughs> <laughs> just being sore in the face. Yeah, you're <laughs> <laughs> so like, Face full of dirt. You're like, so what I'm the there, fuck? I'm, I'm talking to Josh. All of a sudden, like, I hear commotion. Boom, I get oh, socked. I turn and look. Punch. There's no one there. I'm like, what the fuck? Boom, I get socked again. I turn and look, you and there's no jump. one there again. And I look in the crowd, and I see a little head bouncing through the crowd, like running. And I'm like, what the fuck? Just go for a little bit so you're not too bad. I'm not fucking be shit. Hold on. Yeah. Just get the share forward. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, uh, so I see this little head and it's bouncing through the Yo, crowd. You got like a boxing chasing around you. Yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck? And I look and then it starts coming towards me like a little shark in the water. Yeah. And I look and it's a girl. It was a dude's girlfriend that I knocked out. Oh. She fucking, she cold cocked me twice and was running around for a third shot. She's and I a better seen fighter her. than he is. Right. right? <laughs> So she goes for the third punch. Bam, I smack her hand out of the way and I shove her. I'm like, you better not yeah. fucking come at me again. Like, Chill out, girl. I don't hit girls, but you'll yeah. get smacked. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. then um, so then that stops. And then the the dad who was at the house, I don't even know whose house it was. I, I was just, I was a guest there. So yeah. the dad comes up to me and he's like, hey, man, you got to leave. Like, you're causing problems. I was like, I'm not causing problems. I'm like, these guys were picking on this guy. Yeah. Like, tell him, Josh. And Josh is like, yeah, these dudes were fucking talking shit to me, yada, yada. And he's pregnant. He's like, well... That's like my daughter's friend. That's her. This is her house. So, you know, you got to yeah, go. Yeah. I was like, you know, that's cool. Whatever. So then the guy like tries to grab my arm and I pull my arm away. I'm like, don't like, I said, I'll leave peace. Like, don't yeah. fucking don't be an asshole. I'll you know fuck I mean? everybody up in this bitch. Yeah. I was like, don't like, you know what I mean? I don't want to be, I don't want to sound like a fucking dickhead, but don't yeah. be a fucking asshole. You know what I mean? I'm leaving peacefully. So I walk outside. I go outside. The cops are already there. Uh, so the fuck. cops are talking to me. They're like, hey, what's going on? And I'm telling them the cops all know me because I've been arrested a ton of times for fighting. Ugh. And like, so oh, Vince is here. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sitting on the curb and it's like me, my friend, uh, Curtis, I think Josh and then my girlfriend at the time, Shayna. And the cops are talking to us and the dudes that were picking on Josh were on across the street and they were walking by. And the dude that I knocked out, I see him. He's, he's like, we're, I'm making eye contact as the cops talking to us. And he's doing this to me, like, like punching oh, no his shit. fist. So I'm like, I start laughing and then I go, I point to him and I go, yeah. you know what I mean? When this guy's gone, yeah. like I'm telling him like it's like my own sign language. I'm going like, to finish your shit Yeah, off. like you're fucked. So then uh, we're sitting there, the cops talking to us. Cops asked me what happened. I'm like, these two dudes are picking on my boy Josh here. And like, obviously I didn't snitch him out across you because I wanted yeah. to beat him up some more. Yeah. So I'm like, but even picking- then you, that's not, you don't fucking rat people out. It's a fight. That's the thing that yeah, doesn't yeah. exist anymore. And so I was like, they were picking on my friend Josh. I defend him. They kicked me out, so I left. You know what I mean? No big yeah. deal. Like, no harm done. I'm not there picking fights. Like, you know what I mean? And my friends all back my story up. And even other people, like, came and backed my story up. So the yeah. cops like, okay, that's cool. Like, just, you know, get out of here. Go go hang out. Do something else. I'm like, cool. So the cop takes off, and I go to leave. And those dudes are gone already. So I was of like, whatever. They, they were left. just talking shit. And, and yeah. he was hitting his fist. While the cop was there, because he's yeah, like, I know like, you can't beat my ass again right now. when the cop's around. Yeah, so I was like, whatever. So, like, that's, like, a little story of, like, my fights, typically. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. when I got into fights, it was usually something like that. Or I was always crowd control. Like, if my my, my brother, like, we we grew up in, in the valley, like, in, in Canoga Park, in yeah. DeSoto Gardens, which is, like, a pretty bad area.
that's how it was where I lived. And so that's kind of how that's kind of how the culture was back then. Yeah. Now there's like, guns. Yeah. You, you you know me. If you you handled your shit like a man, you yeah. fought man on man, and you know you got your ass kicked. Sometimes you won, sometimes you didn't. That's yeah. the nature of the beast. <laughs> So, so anyway, yeah. I got into a fight at this party. I'm at, I'm at this house. I'm at my, my girlfriend's uncle's un- or my girlfriend's dad's brother's house. Yeah. It's his uncle. Yeah. Her, oh yeah. Her uncle. So we're chilling They're They're fucking with me. And then, you know, he was sitting on me and Mark. And then I remember like getting so mad cause I couldn't move. I was so pissed, dude. And I was it's like, the worst feeling. It's yeah. like a jujitsu when somebody has a gorilla on top and you can't fucking move. <laughs> yeah. Blanket party, man. That shit yeah, sucks. That's dude. Just whack. So then I'm like, Oh, you motherfucker. I'm like, when I get up, I'm fucking you up fat boy. I start, I just started talking shit. So. <laughs> He starts laughing and then I get up and you know what I mean? I'm like, fucking, he's letting me just wail on him. You yeah. know what I mean? And like, he's big. So he's just like kind of laughing at yeah. me. I'm like, oh, I just gave up. I'm like, man, fuck you. You're an asshole. Fuck you. So then he's like, you know what? He's like, I, I know you think you're a fucking tough dude, but he's like, I don't think you're that tough. He's like, why don't you go to this fucking gym and we'll see how tough you are fighting some guys who are actual fighters. Oh, yada, yada. And he knew them. Yeah. So okay. I'm like, tell me where to go. I'm down. So he told me to go to this, this gym and uh, this chip on your shoulder has served you <laughs> throughout your whole career. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, he tells me to go to this gym. I go to this gym and the gym was uh, kids gloves in Simi Valley. Is that just still there? Um, it's not called kids gloves anymore. It's called scrap time now, I believe. That's better. So uh, I like yeah, it better. Scrap better time. I like it. So then I go to this gym and I'm training there and I go there and I'm like, hey, Mark Smith sent me to this gym. Yada. He's like, oh, you Mark, you know, Mark. Yeah, cool. Like, you know, you want to train? Like, what do you want to do? I was like, I want to fight, bro. Like, yeah. I don't want to take on your fucking soccer mom classes. Yeah. I don't want to be in here <laughs> doing fucking some cardio bullshit. Yeah. Like, I want to learn how to fuck someone up. I want to yeah. learn. I want to learn like kickboxing. I want to learn jiu-jitsu. I want to learn wrestling. Like, you know what I mean? I want to judo. I want to learn, I wanna learn a dope shit. I want to learn how to handle myself. And, yeah. and you know what I mean? I want to fight. I want to see if I'm actually a fucking good fighter or not. So he's like, all right, cool. 115 bucks a month. You know what I mean? Like you just pay me and then you come, you train all you want. I'm like, sweet. Cool. So I started training. I started doing, uh, the kickboxing with this dude, Vic Melendez, who was a super cool dude. I loved him. Do you think, like, do you think your fight, like, if you think about it, like, do you think you thought you weren't fighting as much once you jumped into that gym, like outside the gym? You know what I mean? I still fought here and there, but it was a lot less frequent. Yeah. I, you're getting I calmed, your shit out there. In that I calmed gym. down a lot. Yeah. Because once I started understanding, like, I mean, at first I still fought, like, you know, it happened where, where time, like, I'll tell you some stories, but like, it, it's happened where I've been in fights after the altercations, even to this day, I've been in a couple altercations yeah. where I've had to like put someone down, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And, like now, like I'm not, I don't, I don't purposely fuck people up just to fuck them up. Like I'll, I just, I'll just check people, you know what yeah. I mean? I'll let them know what's up. It's like, and hey, that, yeah. And you're then, pushing against the wrong tree, Typically bro. they, they take the hint right away. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? You, some now motherfuckers I don't, are I don't dumb really have that kind of, yeah. Some people will test you, so. Anyway, I'm doing this gym. I'm training. I'm learning jiu-jitsu. Get my ass kicked. I fucking loved it, dude. Yeah. Like, I that's kind of what drove me when I first got. I was like, "You're getting your ass kicked," and you're like, "I, I'm, I can't wait to fuck these dudes up." Yeah, and and to me, like, <laughs> yeah. I got, I got fucked up, and I felt so helpless. I was like, "I want that power." To me, that yeah. was like a magical power, <laughs> and I'm like, "How the fuck can someone possess this kind of ability?" Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this guy's like Superman right now, except he's like Asian. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's so, like a timid Asian Superman. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So I get my ass kicked in the jiu-jitsu, and then uh, I do kickboxing. I do pretty good kickboxing. So, you know, the kickboxer, Vic, you know, took he took me right away. He liked me, you know what I mean? Uh, I think he thought I was a Mexican, too, which yeah. kind of helped me a little bit. Yeah. So he took me yeah, in. He, looked he worked on me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of motherfuckers speak Spanish to me. And I'm Bro, like, but oh. there's also, like, some Mexicans that are, like, blonde hair, blue eyed, and you're like, what the fuck are you? You, you never know. know. Yeah, you never know. You never know. So I was training there, and then the second month rolls around, and then, you know, the guy that owns the gym, he's like, hey, uh... <laughs> man, you're really serious about this. He's like, okay, I didn't know you were super serious. I was kind of a test. He's like, so, because this is when I went to pay him again. Mm-hmm. He goes, all right, I'm going to charge you. I got to charge you a little more, 125 bucks a month. I'm like, all right, that's cool. It's 10 bucks. It's whatever, yeah. you know what I mean? Because he knows you're actually coming. Yeah, and at the time, I was I was uh, an electrician. I was I lived in Simi Valley. I was waking up at 4.30 every morning. Bro. I was driving to Bakersfield. Bro. Um, takes me like an hour and a half, two hours in my street. I had a street bike, so I had a street bike Fuck. with my tool oh, that's bag right. on the back that. of my street bike. I was driving out the you had a Yamaha, field. no? No, it was a Honda, a CBR 600. Uh, uh, yeah, I bought yeah. that thing brand new. Um, I was driving out there and back every day. And then I'll go home, take a shower, and I go to the gym at night. And then, you know, I go home. I get home at like 9, 10, you know, eat, those some, eat some top can, ramen. And yeah, those are the years you can do it. Again. Yeah, because I was young and I had it. And honestly, when I look back now, I'm like, how the fuck did I have the energy to do that? Like, Bro. Where, where, where was that? Where is that now? Yeah, like, shit, yeah. my energy. 
A lot so, of it, I mean, yeah, because like right out of high school, everybody's just so hungry to work and do shit. And you're like, cool, I can fucking do whatever I want. I don't have to go to a stupid ass school anymore. Yeah. And, and it was an exciting new thing for me. It was almost like a new girlfriend, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're so infatuated with that, with well, that thing. Shit that out of person. Girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, right. That you're just like, oh, more, more, more. I want it. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's how it was for me. I, I totally loved it just from the get go. And I've always loved fighting. I've always been into it. So I was like, fuck yeah, I was super But now excited. you're actually learning it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you had like a natural knack at it, but now you're like, oh shit, I'm learning what the fuck is this shit's really about. Yeah, and because I'm the kind of person when I learn something, like I'm good at everything I do, you know what I mean? I'm lucky yeah. that if, if I do something, I could do it very well right yeah. off the bat, you you're know like, what I mean? Uh, you're naturally gifted with yes, stuff. Yes, I'm very perceptive with stuff, and, and I learn very quickly, so I was, and I like to learn things in and out. When I learn something, I like to learn all of it, you know what I mean? Like uh -huh. whether... Whether it's, you know, hanging drywall or doing electrical work or yeah. fucking playing video games or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I learn everything I can about it. I do research. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, I'm well, such a nerd like that. Why are you putting up two sheets of drywall or whatever? Exactly. Yeah. I'm a nerd like that where yeah. I, I learn about stuff. So, um, so I, I, was, I was super into it. And then, you know, I'm training again. And then the third month rolls around and the guy at the gym was like, this, is this, kind, of, this kind of story makes me a little mad. But, you know, it's kind of, it was a good lesson for me. So I go back to the gym. I go to pay him again. And the guy goes, oh, it's 135 this month. Motherfucker. Yeah, so I'm like, hey man, like you charge me ten bucks. What is this? A shakedown, bro? Yeah. I was like, you charge me one fifteen, then one twenty five, which you know it's ten bucks, it's whatever. You yeah. know, you didn't expect me probably to, to be still, serious about what I said. Where's that shit gonna end though? Yeah, so then and he goes, Well, listen, his excuse was the commission's making me charge more because of their rates and yada yada, mm. which I knew that was bullshit. The commission mm. don't run gyms. No, they don't. The athletic commission runs fights and events. That's it. Yeah. And I had I had done research already, so I had, I'd known about fighting, and I know how it works. You know what I mean? I already yeah. knew all that kind of crap. So. You're like, you're fucking, you're bullshitting me. Yeah, so I was like, you know what? And I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm going to go somewhere else. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, like I don't, I don't want to be paying you 10 bucks more a month every fucking month for the rest of my life until I just... You own me, bro. Yeah, like that's yeah. not cool. Like I want to learn, but I'm not willing to go broke to learn how to fight with you. You know what I mean? Like, and at the same like time, that. it tells you a lot about the type of person that he is. Yeah, and and I didn't like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just felt like he was he was a he was a money guy. He was trying mm -hmm. to get money at me. So then I found out that the guy Casey, who was teaching me jiu jitsu at the time, J Casey Kakam, and then Marco Cruzat, who were the first guys that I ever trained jiu jitsu with, mm -hmm. and uh, another guy Justin Drello. We're like, oh, and another guy, Bjorn. I don't know Bjorn's last name, but he kind of quit to be a nurse, which I kind of thought was kind of funny. <laughs> but uh, He's fucking people up, and then he's going to go yeah. treat them. <laughs> and Bjorn was good, too. Like He was a brown belt at the time, or a oh, purple shit. belt, and he was a very good kickboxer, had like some experience, and he was like, he was kind of like King Dingling of our little group there, you know what I yeah. mean? Like He was the man that was like showing us a lot of the stuff. And he walked away. Yeah, so they all were like, hey, you know, we're all leaving here because this guy's not paying Casey for coaching and teaching and oh. stuff. So there was a lot of like adversity there. So you know, it wasn't just with you, it was with everybody. Yeah, so... We all left, and they were training at Moore Park College. So I'll train at Moore Park College with those guys, those three guys, four guys, for maybe a week or two. Or like then, the wrestling gym or something? Yeah, in the wrestling, in the wrestling room. Nice. And then we'd run up the amphitheater and, and down. We'd do that. That would be our warm-up. And yeah. then we'd go in, we'd do some drills, and then we'd spar, do some live rounds and stuff. So, Dude, if you think about that, a lot of it's because like we're so like programmed. Like in high school, you used to do that shit, right? You'd go to your fucking class, and it's like a place to go and shit. Yeah. Right in college, it's like an easy halfway. It's It's almost like when you're getting like it's almost like a herding thing like you like sheep you know what i mean you get herded yeah. into into becoming a certain way yeah your fucking pattern is that's what they're trying to do they're trying to yeah. make you go work eight hours a day and then go home and fucking enjoy your whatever your tv you have yeah. and, and call it a day and, and that's how we were and uh so my friend marco was like in case we're like hey big john mccarthy's opened up a gym in valencia he's yeah, having five that. team tryouts that made waves when that gym opened up yeah it was huge yeah. it was a it, i remember it was a big thing it was in yeah. my fucking newspaper yeah. in team you know i was like where the, where the fuck's valencia i didn't even know where valencia was at the time you know what I, mean? I never heard of it yeah so oh, it's by magic mountain cool. yeah i was like magic mountain that place is that close like yeah. i thought magic mountain was far <laughs> you know what i mean i haven't been yeah. like the first time i went to magic mountain i think i was like 16 or 17 and oh, i had damn. no idea how close it was i always thought it was like this you're not driving yeah, this you're magically like far off land, you know what I mean? Like Disneyland. Like yeah, that was yeah. like far, you know what I mean? I thought it was just this magical little area. And so right. like, and I grew up super poor, so I never got to do that kind of stuff. I never yeah. went to Magic Mountain. I went to Disneyland. You know, we never went camping or did stuff like that because yeah. I just, we were super poor, you know yeah. what I mean? And I have, I had a one well, brother, three sisters, and it was just my mom raising us and she didn't work. You know what I mean? Like it was, yeah. it was a really, it was really hard for us. We grew up super poor, but that's probably, we, that's we probably a happy. lot of it where that chip comes from where you're like, I'm going to use this shit. Yeah. You know? And you know, like, and almost I feel like when I was young, I remember growing up younger and feeling like I was so restricted because I wasn't able to do things that most kids have. Like if, uh, if someone had like, we didn't have a color TV. If someone had a color TV. I was like, fuck, you're rich, bro. Yeah. And they're like, we're not rich. I'm like, you have a color TV, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. I, got a, me. I got a 19 inch black and white TV <laughs> that I got to
So, I mean, I had not, to save up that, for this RF adapter. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, I'm not even like that's that poor, but you know what I yeah. mean? That was like but in the area. Yeah. And comp- comparatively to the fucking people around you, yeah, when you're, yeah. your friends have all this cool shit. Yeah, and like, like, I never, I, you know, I didn't have toys and stuff like that. Like, I just made do, you know what I mean? Like, I had a few toys, but it wasn't like, you know what I mean? Like, I saw other kids and was, I was kind of jealous, but I was kind of yeah. like, eh, whatever, those spoiled kids have their thing and I, I got my thing. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm not yeah. going to, I'm not going to judge my life on what they have. And in a lot of ways, you do, you do get a lot because. A lot of times, like, you think that that's just tight, but just the parents just, like, fuck these kids. Like, just get them whatever they want. Just get them yeah. whatever toys they want. And as I grow older, I start to see that kind of stuff. So I'm actually kind of glad that I grew up the way I did because it made me – it gave me the mindset that I have today. Yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. Where I, I honestly cherish everything I have. Yeah. So, like, I don't have much, but the shit I have is nice. I take care of it. Yeah. And everything I have and the people I have in my life, I, I love and respect, and I have a close-knit relationship with yeah. everyone in my life. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, it teaches uh, you who's your ride or die. Yeah, who's gonna be there whether you have money or not. You yeah. know, really early on. It's it's a real it's a real like humbling experience to learn how to appreciate things. You know what yeah. I mean? It's hard. It's it's hard to appreciate things because us living in the states, we're kind of spoiled. And I know a lot of people bitch and say, especially but the whole California, world looks at us like that. They're just yeah. like, you guys are spoiled brats. We are spoiled brats of the rest of the world. We, we really are. are. And yeah. honestly, in my eyes, we are because when yeah. I've been to other countries and. When I'm like, I say shit like, oh, what's up with your fucking Wi-Fi? Yeah, and they're like, what's that? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck's Wi-Fi? Yeah, I trip out. But you it's know like, I mean? you know, your whole color TV, black TV thing, yeah. same thing. You're like, oh, you have Wi-Fi? Your motherfuckers are rich. It, yeah, and it's, a, it's an eye-opener, bro. You're like, it's shit's everywhere, like, bro. It's at Starbucks. I'm like, <laughs> shit, yeah. I'm like, yeah, right? Go to the coffee shop. People <laughs> hang out there for hours and hours just on their fucking computer like nerds, you know what I yeah. mean? Because it's free. Yeah. And, you know, so th- that's it. But so... Big John McCarthy's having these fight team tryouts. They're like, come, come try out. I'm like, cool. So I, um, Casey and Marco are already up there trying out. They tried out too. And Bjorn tried out. And then... Um, Some people so, got fucked up with those tryouts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> real got yeah, fucked up. Dude. So um, <laughs> I, go, I go to the tryout. I show up late. My coach, who's my head coach now, who was coach of the fight team and, and running the tryouts, Brian Peterson. Oh, I know Brian, yeah. Yeah. Um, I show up late, so I'm talking, and Big John was there. I was like, "Damn!" I was like, "Bitch, I'm McCarthy." Yeah, he really is a big motherfucker. He is a big motherfucker. <laughs> that dude's like a horse, bro. Yeah, He's bro. a monster. She's so like, I was Damn, like, "Big John, no wonder they call you Big John." Yeah. So you know what's funny is like I saw him and like he was big to me. So I look at him and I'm like, "I'm like, damn, you look a lot bigger on TV." Yeah. And like you know, I was just kind of fucking with him just to see yeah. what he, how he'd react to me. And he was like, "You kind of just gave me this look," and then yeah. he's like, "What are you here for?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm here for the fight team tryouts." <laughs> And he's like, okay, go see Brian. He's over there. And then kind of like just shook his head and walked yeah, away. And I was like, fucking idiot. I was like, fuck, I guess he hates me already. Yeah. So I go see Brian. I'm like, hey, Brian, my name's Vince. You know, shook his hand. I'm like, I, I wanted to try out. I'm sorry I'm late. You know, I know you guys aren't, you guys already ran it, but I know you guys are having another try in a couple weeks or a week, whatever. Like, yeah. I want to try Oh, they were out. already over when you showed up. No, they were probably like maybe halfway through, I think. Oh, uh, but it's too late to jump in. Yeah, I couldn't just jump in. So um, I stayed. I talked to Brian, and then Brian's like, okay, cool. Like, how long have you been training? I was like, oh, I've been training for like two months. Yeah. So he's like, oh, you've been training for the trials two months? I'm like, no, I've been training two months, period, period bro. Period, yeah. And he gave me this look like, okay, motherfucker. Yeah. Go fill out this paper, and then yeah. we'll see you next week. You yeah. know what I mean? Because a lot of those kids up there, there was a lot of like rich kids that went up there and shit that yeah, have been and, training and for a long time yes, their whole life yeah and there's a lot of guys that have been training for yeah. years and years and years you know what i mean like the the guy that who had the least amount of experience was there for was training for in jiu-jitsu for maybe like three to five years you know what i mean or Fuck. wrestling or or something they high yeah. school wrestled or something like that yeah. which i never did yeah and uh, you got into real fights yeah i was which in real trains fights. You. like yeah I, I was like fighting for my life you know what i mean when <laughs> i real. fought like that's real fighting i've been hit by baseball bats i've been stabbed like oh, you know what I mean? i've been damn. shot at like i've had like real life situations where like i could have been like killed or seriously injured that you know helps I mean? you though control your fucking adrenaline though in the cage too yeah for the and, for those of you who don't know we, uh, we were talking about big john big john's like one of the biggest mma well now he's a commentator yeah he's but, a commentator now for bellator but, but he used to be like the the ufc referee yeah for he every was like, he's fight. a head ref and he's actually the one that came up with a lot of the he's the one that implemented a lot of the rules in mma uh, yeah, yeah yeah he's the one that i think because he knows so much yeah and he's a he, former cop yeah, yeah, he's super smart. Fucking his crazy. dad, his dad started SWAT. Oh, that's, like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? he used to be a football player. Dude. Like, you know what I mean? He's a, he's a very intelligent guy. Yeah. Like, I really love Big John. He's a he's a super awesome dude. He's done and that a lot facility was the shit. Yes, it was huge. It was Massive, like what 15, 20,000 square feet. And then they like, expanded it, it the second side too. Yep, and they expanded it so it was twice as big. It was. It I used was to love monstrous. that. They had a fucking rock climbing wall, jujitsu mat, an octagon. Yeah, they huge, had two, two octagons. Two thousand square feet of jujitsu mat on one side, then Bro. like another thousand feet. Yeah. All kinds of weightlifting equipment. They had the rock wall. 
He had the CrossFit area, which was separate. Full yeah. cage. That was the cage from the Ultimate Fighter. Yep. He had a full boxing ring. Which is ring. dope to even be in that cage. Yeah, right? And, it, and he had the, the tarp from the actual Ultimate Fighter. The he had other canvases on, on the wall, the wall yeah. that were signed by all the had guys. Had blood on them and shit. Yeah, blood. Like it, There was a lot of nostalgia and a lot of like history in that yeah. gym. You know what I mean? Because Big John's been in the MMA since the, be- the since birth the of it. Beginning, yeah. Since the birth he's, of it. He's been there the whole time. He's like, I remember watching the first fights when they didn't have gloves, and he's the referee. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, he's been there since it's been there. Like Tank Abbott and shit. And yeah. Vitor wearing shoes in the octagon. Yeah. When, <laughs> when, like, and you know, when you think of, like, the, the cornerstones of MMA, like, Big John McCarthy really is one of them, dude. Like, yeah, he's, for sure. If, like, he's, like, in my eyes, he should be in the Hall of Fame, too, with the fighters yeah. and, and with everyone else. It makes sense. He's he's been there. He's he's been there since the beginning, since the infancy stage, which MMA is still starting to grow. Uh, to me, yeah. M- MMA is still in its like teen years right now. Yeah, honestly, it is in the way that it's evolved, and it has evolved super fast. But to me, it's still in its teen years. It's in a weird place right now because it just bought it just got bought by William Morris Endeavor, which is like a big Hollywood agency. Yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of like in this weird like Hollywood ish phase. Yeah. Who knows what's gonna happen? Like, is and, it gonna turn into WWE? Or, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. What, but, I don't think that'll ever happen. I, it, I don't think it worked. That format works with with this type of sport because you can't, you don't know who's going to win. Yeah. Because it's know. real. Yeah. It's a real fight. You yeah. can't predict a real fight. Yeah. And that's honestly what I loved about it. Yeah. So, so you, you start, know. so you start, you go to these tryouts and then he puts yeah. you aside. Brian shines me on, tells yeah. me yada, yada. So I'm like, okay, motherfucker, you'll see yeah. next week. So I go to the tryouts <laughs> again and Hector Pena, um, Rest in peace, Hector. By the way, oh yeah, that's right. Shit. Um, Hector Pena uh, pulled me aside. He thought he thought I was a Mexican too, which yeah. I love because he used to spend so much extra time with me. Yeah, and He's like, why uh, do you do that? Because this kid's a cool Mexican. You yeah, know? And you're I, like, I got hey, another funny it. story about that too. But <laughs> so Hector Pena puts me with this dude, Gavin, and I, you might have known Gavin. Gavin was a little older. He was a Taekwondo black belt. He's been doing Taekwondo oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. his whole yeah, life. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So right. I'm sparring with Gavin, and we're kickboxing. And Gavin's just throwing crazy kicks at me, and he's kind of attacking me with kicks and. I got mad, so I just I came in, I ate a kick, and just threw this fucking bomb on him and just dropped his ass. Oh. I was like, "Pam!" I just hit him, and then I was like, "What's up, motherfucker? <laughs> Fuck your kids!" Yeah. You know what I mean? If I Hector, get inside, I'm knocking your ass yeah. out. Yeah. So the Hector's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa calm down!" And I was like, "Oh, I'm calm, bro." Yeah. So you know, Hector's, you know, Gavin gets up a little bit, shakes cobwebs off. Hector's okay. One more time. Yeah. So this time I'm like, I'm not letting him kick him. I just I went straight at him, just bam, dropped him again. <laughs> Hector's like, "Okay, that's it. We're good." <laughs> so I'm like, and cool. that was the tryout. That that was the kickboxing part of the tryout. Oh shit! So okay. there was that, and then there was a jitsu part. So they were like, "Fuck, we're gonna avoid your head trauma, bro." <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Gonna let this guy get <laughs> like, okay, this guy hits like a motherfucker. Yeah. Let's just let let's just move on. Yeah. So then, um, I do the jitsu part. I did pretty good in the jitsu part. I didn't get sub, but I didn't catch anyone subbing, or getting. It's, I didn't. I didn't sub anyone. I didn't get sub. So it's I fucking I hard to even know own. what a sub is. Like, when yeah, you're fucking barely starting. Yeah, it's hard. You know what I mean? And you, like. All I know is when someone's trying to do something, I know I need to stop him from doing what he yeah. wants to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. In my mind, that like that's that was the common sense thing for me is like he's trying to grab me here, so I'm gonna stop it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's what helped me a lot progress, especially yeah. as fast as I did. As you get into the higher skill level, though, dudes will do that shit on purpose to yes, bait you. Yes. Yes. You know. So then you have to now you have to use your sense when you get the higher skill level of your body movement and what you feel from the guy instead yeah. of what you see him doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they'll trick you. Guys do that shit. I do that shit. Everyone does that shit. Yeah. That's, that's, it's, it's like, it's like, it it's like feigning a jab just to throw a kick or something. Exactly. It's a tactic. It's yeah. a setup. It's just, yeah, same yeah. exact thing. You're right. So we do the jits. I do pretty good. Um, then we do wrestling. Um, I got taken down a couple of times. I took the other dude down a couple of times. You know, it was just, Perfect. it was raw wrestling. Yeah. And then I wish I had no wrestling experience at all. Um, and then we did some little workout, which was, we did push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, like jump squats, yeah, and then right. he made us like jump over some pads and like just stupid shit. And, yeah, like just to see if you have like the stamina and the, and the strength. Or whatever. Yeah, and this is after everything. So like, and I and I blew through the workout. Like yeah. I've always been pretty naturally gifted in my stamina, where yeah. I don't get tired easy, especially yeah. when I'm doing something physical. Like I'm I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. But then when yeah. I stop, I crash a little bit, you know, because I Same. put so much into it. Yeah. So you empty we, out. Yeah. So we do good, and I tried out with my friend Sal. So and I lived with Sal at the time. Um, I got kicked out of my house. So I was kind of homeless, and then my friend Sal and, and his mom, his family basically took me, and they're like, you nice. know what, like, sucks, what happened to you, like, yeah. come stay with us, you know, I mean, you can stay with us, we'll figure things out, yeah. you know, don't worry about it, so I was like, cool, love you guys. What a crazy fucking thing, if, when you look back at that, think about that, like, you're fucking, you're trying out to fight somewhere, you're homeless, you're crashing at your boy's spot, yeah. you're like, what, and that's kind of what the early 20s is, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. And then I'm, I'm working too. So like, yeah. I'm, I'm having to deal with like, where am I put my tools, my clothes? Like I didn't have much anyway. You're on but, a fucking motorcycle? Yeah. On a motorcycle. I didn't have a car because yeah. I, I mean, I had a truck, I had a good job and I had a truck, but
cut left in front of me on a light, clipped me, and I rolled that son of a bitch and just Ooh. destroyed it. Like, it, like it, you like, flipped? Flipped it like 10 times, took out a street light. Like You didn't I, get fucked up? No, I, I walked away un, unharmed. Okay, like, maybe you not, should be fighting. Not one scratch, yeah. <laughs> Which I had my buddy in, in the passenger seat, Meathead. I call him Meathead. His name's Mike. Yeah. He's got a big-ass dome. So uh, I call him Meathead. Meathead ended up in the back seat of my car. Shit. And so like I remember landing. It was a Tacoma. It was a 2004 Tacoma. I was looking, facing the opposite way that I was going. My car was still running. It was Ooh. in gear in the and because I had a, it was a stick, and I remember just hearing the drive shaft just bam, 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 hit bam the floor because it snapped my differential part the oh, way the guy hit me. Fuck. So, um, because he hit me by my quarter panel on my back end, threw my truck sideways and just fishtail. It just rolled. Yeah, yeah it, just, it, it just instantly started flipping. And I remember it was on Sequoia and LA and Simi Valley. And I remember looking straight ahead and seeing Seven Eleven right there, just spin, spin, spin. And then it would spin faster, faster, and then slow down. And then like every time we landed and hit, like. I remember like jerking in a way that when we landed, it it threw more momentum into the truck and made it flip faster. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going with the momentum. Yeah. Boom, 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 so boom, like boom. I remember just like holy shit, you man. And it happens. I get out. I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm walking towards the guy who who clipped me. And I'm like, you. F I was getting ready to beat this dude down. Like you yeah. motherfucker. And it turns dude, out, dude, how scary is that? A fucking guy you hit. <laughs> the truck flips ten times. <laughs> And he walks out like the fucking Terminator. You're like, right? you motherfucker. Yeah, like, I'm going to fuck you up right now. And it turns out being at someone I knew. Oh, no shit. It was fuck. my friend Brian's girlfriend's brother. And so I'm like, you idiot. I think his name was Sean. I'm like, you motherfucker. I'm like, what the fuck? He's like, I'm sorry, bro. Just the light turned yellow and I didn't think you were going to go. So I just went and I'm like, you yeah. stupid son of a bitch. I was like, oh, my God. So then I'm yelling at him, right? And I'm walking towards him. And all of a sudden, boom, bam, cop pulls up. And I was like, whoa, what the fuck? And the cop's like, whoa, calm down, calm down, back up, like separate, yada, yeah, yada. Yeah. And I was like, where the fuck did you come from? He's like, I was sitting at the intersection. I saw the whole thing. I was like, oh, cool. So you saw this motherfucker. Like, clip He's me. like, yeah. He's like, don't worry about it. Just go sit down and relax. Like, you're fucking obviously in shock right now because you're yeah. walking around like crazy right now. Yeah. So just go relax. Adrenaline's like, right. pumping. Yeah. So I go I go back to my truck and I'm like, my buddy Meehead's in the back seat. So I'm like, <laughs> still fucking dead. Yeah. Just in there, just all fucking. <laughs> So I go back to him. I'm like, kind of grabbing him. Like, man, you all right? You right? He's like, what the fuck happened? I was like, dude, we just got, we're in a wreck, dude. Like, I'm <laughs> like, are you okay? Ten times. Yeah. I beat a guy up. The cops are here. <laughs> yeah, Chill out. Like, we just got no car accident. I'm like, you all right? He's like, yeah, I think so. I'm like, get out. He's like, I feel woozy. And I'm like, yeah, you're pretty. You can cuss. I'm like, yeah, you can cuss. You got fucking rocked. I was like, just have a seat. Just chill. So we're sitting there. We go through all that shit. And then, um, so that happened. Then I got a, I got a brand new one. I bought a 2005 Tacoma. And then that truck ended up getting stolen. Damn, the bro. gangbanger, some gangbanger stole it, used it in some robbery, and then let the motherfucker on fire. Damn. So that used to happen a lot back in the day. Yeah. I remember so, I, used to, I used to drive by cars that were like stolen, burning, and I remember I remember you would, <laughs> you'd, you'd always hear the fucking airbag pop. Boom, boom. Oh yeah. You'd be like, oh shit, it's fucking in before the cops got there. It's crazy, but it's almost like, dude, when you're living in the shits of your life. It's almost like you're fucking creating more shit. Like, you can't fucking stay away from the bullshit. Like, yeah. fuck, my car flips. Now the cops are here, and this is fucking happening, and that's happening. Yeah. These guys are stealing my truck. It's it, so weird. It's like a hurricane. Like, you go through the shit, and then all of a sudden you, like, see, like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. And all of a sudden when you, you do more shit. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know what I mean? And then it's finally over after yeah. a while, and then things start picking up again. But, yeah, so, so, that so that's all happening. You're fucking homeless, and you're, 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 you're training. You get through this training. Did they get you on a team right away, or what did they say? No. So I tried out for the team. Uh, I tried with my buddy Sal. So we were at home. They're like, okay, tryouts are good. Thank you, everyone, for showing up. We'll give you a call this weekend. Training starts on Monday. So we're like, cool. I go to I go to the house. Me and Sal are chilling. Sal was like, did you hear anything yet? I was like, no. Sal was like, I got a call. I'm oh, like, shit. really? Sal was like, yeah, dude. He's like, he told me I didn't make the team, but they want me to come there and train. I have a lot of potential, and if I do good, nice. they'll take me on the team, and I'm cool. I'm like, damn. And he's like, did you get a call? I was like, no, nah, man, I haven't heard shit. And he's kind of teasing me, like, oh, I got a yeah, call, yeah. motherfucker. Da, 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 da. Like, bitch, you got a call. I said, you're not in, motherfucker. Yeah, but I was still a little hurt, you know yeah, what I mean? Sure. So I was like, fuck. And then I'm like thinking in my head, I'm like, damn, man. I'm like, if if they honestly didn't take me, like, because I, I was super proud of, like, the way I did in, in the training. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fuck I was, yeah, you knocked a guy down, yeah, like, twice and shit. You yeah, wrestled. And, and no training, stuff. you know what I mean? And and I, I felt like there's no way they wouldn't, they'd tell me no, you yeah. know what I mean? So then I was like, kind of hurt. I'm like, fuck, man. They, they didn't even give me a call. Like, they don't give a fuck. Like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going to. Like in my head, I'm like, I'm gonna make it a personal vendetta to join another team, and I'm gonna fuck every single one of his guys <laughs> up. You know what I mean? Like, of course. if that if that's the way they want to play, I, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold fuck that grudge. everybody up. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure he knows how bad of a regret he of a mistake he made when he didn't take me. That's what drives me too. I'm like, I'll show you, bitch. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. shit, man. Like, I don't let stuff get me down. I let it drive me. I let that yeah. anger drive me. Yeah. And so uh, I didn't get a call. And then
I'm like, what's up? He's like, Brian Peters from the gym. And immediately I was like, oh, yeah. like what's up, man? Call. Like, what's like, up? Yeah. Like, t- like, you know what, what's going on? He's like, well, he's like, kind of got some good news and some bad news. And I was like, fuck. He's like, which one do you want first? I'm like, well, give me the, give me the bad news first. You know what I mean? Like, let's just kill yeah. this before, you know, let's end on a good note. Yeah. He's like, all right. He's like, well, you're not very experienced. You don't have any skills and you have no training. <laughs> Thanks for shitting on me, bro. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, so you're, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? You're, you're going to be a lot of work for us. You know what I mean? And we kind of, we thought about you and we weren't sure. He's like, so we, we honestly put you in the maybe pile. I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, what's, what's the good, good news? Yeah. He's like, the good news is he's like, you, you made it out of the maybe pile. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, we're, we're taking you. You, you joined the fight mm. team. Congratulations. Training starts Monday, 630, Monday through Friday. I'm, I'm there, like, Really? He's like, yeah. I was like, fuck, I think I just fucking, fuck yeah, fucking threw my phone or sent my phone <laughs> at the time or whatever it was. You know what I mean? Because that was right before. Did I have a cell phone then? This think. was this is probably like 05, maybe? 06? I started training in 07. 07? Okay. 07 was 06? when I started training. I think I did have a cell phone. And I, it was like a, I remember it was a Samsung black and white cell phone, not even a flip phone or nothing, just a little shitty phone. I have one of them bitches. Which I love that thing because I would be in my, my Honda, I had a Honda, an old 91 Civic, that was my uh, first yeah, car. Yeah. And I'd have my stereo blast and I'd be bumping like Pennywise or Lagwagon or something. And I would have a full blown conversation. Oh yeah. And they could hear me true. and I could hear them. Like it was like so awesome. How have phones gotten worse about that? I don't know. It's bullshit. They're, they're it's so they're sen- they're sensitive because they're listening to everything. Now. Yeah. Well, they're listening to the whole so fucking room. Now. They're listening to us recording us so and building I, I profiles. Like, fuck yeah, fuck boom. My phone was like smashed. I'm like, fuck. So then, you know, I had to get a new <laughs> yeah. phone. And then uh, I'm like, cool. So I, I go right to Sal. I'm like, damn. I was like, I got a phone call, Sal, from Brian. He's like, really? And I was like, kind of playing it off. Like, yeah, yeah dude. And he's like, you didn't make it, huh? You didn't make it, huh? Yeah. I'm like, I made it, motherfucker. I'm like, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> What's up, motherfucker? I'm on the team. You ain't suck my dick. <laughs> yada, yada. Like, you know what I'm just talking shit to him. So he's like, oh, what the fuck? I'm like, oh, yeah, you guys are living together, right? Yeah, we're living together. Fuck yeah. So I was like, what's up? Training starts on Monday. Who's driving? He's like, yeah. we'll just take turns. I was like, sweet. Fuck it. So I started training, got my ass beat. Like, I got my ass beat for like the first eight months to a year before I started actually that shit sucks starting too. to hold my own. It breaks yeah. you, bro. I, I, I only trained there for like a lit. I was fucking around, but it was a bunch of dudes like you who were like actually trying to do this shit and a bunch yeah. of like good people. I'm like, fuck man like this is hard man <laughs> like yeah. you're getting your ass kicked and every day we would do like wrestling days and i would get fucked up at wrestling yeah. but i would always i would always try to teach myself one or two things that day i would try to have at least one thing uh, stick in my head and um that way like when i came back you know what i mean like i would i would practice that thing and yeah. i'm the kind of person you show me something or you teach me how to do something i'm gonna do it right away you yeah. know what i mean and i'm ambidextrous so left or right i did things both ways which is what brian soon found out and uh. really loved about me is because we he can would flip all this. Yes, yeah. he would show me something, and I would we'd do something in the drill, and then I would do it while we were live rolling or live sparring, whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, would, which is always the goal when he shows you a yeah. move. And yeah, and especially on guys who know what you're doing because you were practicing it that day. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if you could pull shit off like that, like that's a big confidence booster, honestly. Fuck yeah. So I, I, I'm that kind of person where I would, I would be like that, and you know, Brian took me very well, and he started loving me, and me and him gathered this relationship, and eventually I was like, kind of like you know what? Like I was getting so good to where the guys that were showing me stuff, I was showing them stuff and how oh, I was shit. doing stuff. And like, and how'd then, you get out of that? And you're like, oh, I just did this. Yeah. And like, to me, it was just like, how do you not know this? Like you yeah, fucking yeah. used to show me this shit. Like, why aren't you doing it? Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I didn't understand how people would be shown something and they wouldn't get it. They wouldn't c- grasp the concept of how yeah. to use it. You know what I mean? Cause it's your natural knack though. For yeah. It, you know? I didn't understand that. So I would, all, you know what I mean? Then I started teaching people stuff like that. And then uh, after a while I got this relationship with Brian where we were like really good with buddy, buddy. So, what I would do to get good is um, I would attack him. So we train him to be over. Brian would be on the mat. And he'd be talking to Felicia O or Lou yeah. Salzetti or, or John or someone, you yeah. know, and i come with Brian and I'd try to fucking choke his ass. You know, yeah. I'd just try to strangle him. He's, he's, and he, he's high level too. He is. Fuckers. He is. He's a badass. Yeah. And he started off wrestling, got really good at jits. You know, he trends over to jiu-jitsu. How much do you think he weighs? Like, Brian, you're yeah. like 150, 160 pounds. This is so crazy, bro. Like, Which is like about, it was about my weight then too. I think I was like 160 then yeah. too. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like a little dude like that, you'll fuck a bunch of dudes up. Yeah, right. Gang and people up. That's why, like they say, it's not the big guy you gotta watch out for. It's a yeah. little guy that knows what he's doing. Yeah, because you got they got they rely on technique, not fucking strength. Yeah, you know. And so uh, I would attack him. He'd fuck me up. He'd strangle me some way. Like yeah. let's say he'd darse me. I'm like shit. All right, I tap. Show me that. Show me how to defend that. Okay, he'd show me a defense. Boom, he tried to. I'd attack him again immediately. He showed me, and I would just attack him, try yeah. to cheap shot him, you know. Yeah. And then bam, he tried to darse me again, and I would defend it. He'd be like, "Okay, good. He'd catch me something else." And yeah. then, Fuck. Okay. How do I defend? How do I defend that? Yeah. Yeah. So every day I would attack him like that, and then he would show me defensive moves uh, to to not get strangled. Smart. And so after a while, I was picking up on the stuff, and 
it got to the point where I couldn't be tapped. Like I got my, he gave my blue belt after six months, I think of training. And at that point it was hard for some black belts to catch me because yeah. I was so good at my defense at that point because I was being attacked by Brian. Yeah. And, uh, this dude, Shane, um, Shane Holly, he used to train there. Shane was a big dude and he, me and him, we used to always make bets. So Shane would be like, I bet you can't last 30 seconds of Brian. I'm like, bet, motherfucker. He's like, all right. He's like, if you last 30 seconds, he's like, I'll pay for pita pit tonight. We'll go eat afterwards. If not, then you're paying. I'm like, deal. Bam, we'd shake. I'd attack Brian. Fuck, 26 seconds. All right, dinner's on me tonight. You know what I mean? Shit. And so like that was that was the game that I would play with Shane. And I would like, Brian never knew, but I was always, I would just attack Brian. But I'm trying to get a free meal out of you. Yeah. And then eventually we would, we included Brian in it. So like. Then Brian would get free food out of you. Yeah. Know what I mean, like we just had this little this little camaraderie yeah. that we had this little bet thing going, and so that's how I got really good at defense. So like, my my jiu-jitsu defense is the first thing that I worked on because, like every fight I know at that point always ends up on the ground, and yeah. I don't want to be one of those guys who could fuck someone up standing up and get someone down. But as soon as I get down, then what? I get subbed. You know what I mean? Like that's you're seeing that a lot, me. man. Yeah, you're seeing that a lot. Well, it, it happened to fucking in your division. Uh, Edson, no, that's, uh, yeah. Edson Barboza, right? Barboza is yeah. a big example. So he, he, he fought Nurmagomedov. He got destroyed. Every grappler he's fought, he's been destroyed by and, yeah. grappling. Tony Ferguson, he got yep. him in the darts, I think. Yeah. And then, and then recently Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee. Yes. Just, and, and he had Kevin Lee hurt too, but what did you, he tried to fucking grapple him, bro. He did. He, all he had to do was throw a head kick or something or bro, even a, he, yeah, anything, he and he could have dropped Kevin Lee and won the fight. But I don't, I don't know what he did. That was the craziest comeback I've ever seen. Where yeah. he heel kicked him in the fucking head. Dude is he was I mean, stanky leg and hard, bro. bro. Like he, he was, was all over, rocked. and he fucked him up at the end of the yeah, fight. Yeah, he he Finished recovered. It. He did what he had to do. He grabbed a hold of him. Barboza was an idiot. Grabbed him instead of just yeah. staying distance and striking. But you know what I mean? Like that. Like I didn't want to be a Barboza. I didn't yeah. want to be one of those guys who doesn't evolve because. Yeah. I'm too smart to know that eventually the sport's going to evolve and I'm going to face guys like yeah, that. Who, yeah. who are or you're going to get to that level. Or yeah, I'm going to get to that level and I don't want to be embarrassed like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I've, I've been embarrassed already in the gym for so long. Like I don't want, I don't want that when I yeah. fight. You know what I mean? I want, I want to make sure I'm able to take care of myself. I want people to know that I'm fucking out here and I'm serious. And the guys that I fight, like they know they have a fight on their hands, whether yeah. it's standing on the ground or in takedowns. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's always, it's going to be a fight. So I got good. I was training at Big John's. I was there forever. And you start you you did how many amateur fights? I went to a, I think a couple of amateur fights. Yeah, we used to fight at Ken Roses and uh, we used to fight all over. Actually, we used to fight at Monrovia, Ring of Fire. I remember um, we went out there. I mean, I think Herman fought out there too. I don't remember. I forgot. We went to it was I think Ken was Roses Valley. Probably, yeah. yeah, Ken Roses and To. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thousand Oaks. That's yeah. where it was. And, yeah. Uh, so that was where I was we doing amateur fights. And when I was fighting amateur, amateur was illegal. Yeah, there was, it was. no commission. There was no camo. It was a gym. Yeah, you go to a gym and hey, what's up? This guy's like. You know what I mean? You're 160, he's 170, you want to fight him? Yeah. Sure, whatever. Yeah. That's how fucking recent the sport is. Yeah. That, that and that was, was yeah. what? 2007 10 years ago? to 2009 is when I when I was fighting amateur like that. Yeah, like and 10, then, 10 um, 9 years ago, 19 years ago? Yeah, and then so I did I did 11 amateur fights. I went 10 and 1. The one fight that I lost, we drove to Iowa in an RV. I remember that. And uh, we fought for Monty Cox. The whole team, like a few of the team members went out there from Big John. Yeah, there was like eight of us, yeah. And And everybody got fucked up. We all got fucked up. We got set up for failure. Monty Cox set us up for failure. Oh, man. So the guys, the guy that I fought, the guy that Alan Shook fought, and another guy that fought one of our other guys were all pro fighters already. And we were just amateurs just starting off. So. We got set a big time. Oh, uh, so they were, they were pros, and they were you guys are just fucking bait. Yeah, and so uh, what funny. happened was, is the guy that I was fighting, I was fucking him up. You know what I mean? I just got caught being stupid. I hit him, I rocked him, he went down, and I, I basically went to rape choke him and fucking yeah. just pound his face in. And as soon as I grabbed him by the neck, he armbarred me. Uh, and I fuck. fought it for a little bit. You know, I almost got out, but then my, my arm popped, and I was like, oh shit, oh. I just tapped. I was like, you know, it's not worth it. Fuck that's, it. That's nasty when your shit starts. Cut, 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 cut. Yeah. So you feel a little little tendons popping yeah, and shit. So I, so I lost, and amateur was illegal, and that that amateur fight was the only only amateur fight that's on my amateur record so amateur i'm zero and one damn technically and in, in amateur even though i have all my fights on youtube yeah they're on youtube you they're can find on youtube them. you can find Knock them you, know, you can see me them. fucking people up yeah so uh there was that and then uh 2009 early 2009 big john came up to me he's like what's up man i was like what's up he's like he's like you know what he's like you're doing really good like i'm super proud of like the way you've evolved and fighting and you know as a person and, and the things that you're accomplishing i'm like Man, like, thank you. Like, that means a lot, John. Like, because he wasn't cool. always like, around the gym. He, yeah, he was there. He wasn't, yeah, but, he was a busy man. He was always doing his thing. You yeah, know what I mean? Repping so, fights. Yeah. So I was like, hey, man, like, thank you, John. Like, that's, you know, coming from coming from you, that's, that means a lot to me. You know what I mean? Legends like, in the sport. Yeah. Yeah. Cause to me, I'm still no one, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's so many guys in there. I still have so many more like accolades or pedigrees on paper that I was kind of like, I'm just a small, I'm the small yeah. fish still. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I always had that mentality. Like, yeah. I always needed, I always need to catch up to people. 
Well, it serves you. So John's like, what's up? You ready to make some money? I was like, if you think I'm ready, John, like I'm ready, bro. Bitch, I've been ready to make yeah. money. Yeah. So I had my first amateur fight two months after training. Like Brian's like, what's up? We're getting you a fight. Yeah. I went to House of Champions, had my first amateur fight. House of Champions. Still I there. got there. Yeah, it's still there. I train yeah. there now. Yeah. I'm back training there. So oh, it's shit. like, yeah, that's right. it's crazy. So it's like a yeah. weird nostalgia when I go there now because yeah. the ring's in the same spot. It's the same fucking ring. Like getting back to the shit that started. Yeah, there. it's it's crazy. Like I really, I I I just love it, man. And so so, but but so you, I I I watched after that point. I started watching you in your pro fights, and you were just murking everybody bro you had like fucking knockout after knockout after knockout a lot yeah. of first round knockouts i was a violent bastard man people just wouldn't last more than three three minutes with me it was so crazy it was and it was kind of like the whole fucking the whole gym was like yo vince is fighting yo vince is yeah. fighting and it was nuts bro because it was like the evolution like like how high can this motherfucker go and then finally you got into the ultimate fighter yeah and i love that too so i loved how much backup i had with my yeah. backup but support i had with yeah. the gym and my family and friends you yeah. know what i mean and i didn't actually tell my mom i was fighting at this point no shit. i didn't tell her until i went pro so Damn. john's like what's up it's time to make some money like let's do this and i was like fuck yeah john you think i'm ready let's do this yeah. so 2007 started training 2009 august 2009 was when i had my first pro fight i fought some dude who was his first pro fight too boom it Even was for match. paul herrera which i this is a this is a sour story for me too but i'm like whatever so Paul Herrera's like, okay, we got to fight. It's in Pomona. I drive out there. I'm cutting weight. First time I'm ever making 155. First time I'm ever cutting weight. Where are you walking around I at? don't know what I'm doing. At that point, I think I was walking around at 170, 175. You got to cut 20 pounds. Yeah. Well, all you motherfuckers are talking about losing weight. Yeah. Try losing 20 pounds in and, a week. And when Brian told me, like, hey, I'm going to get you. You're fighting at 55. I was like, you bumped your fucking head, bro. Yeah. Like, you think I'm going to cut 20 pounds? That Like, there's no, I can't do that. Like, yeah. I'm so skinny as it is. Like, yeah. there's no way. You know what I mean? Body so, does crazy shit. That's why these some of these fighters are at death's doorstep. Like yeah. when Conor McGregor makes forty five, he looks like he's fucking dead. Yeah, it's I'm hard. Like, it's hard. Yeah. But if you if you're really methodical and you know what you're doing, like it's not too bad. Like this right now, science. I'm one yeah. I'm one sixty nine right now. Yeah, and I feel great. You know yeah. what I mean? Like over the years, I've never had a nutritionist, and I've always done it myself in my own experimental process. Yeah. And now I've got it down. I know my body so well that. I feel healthy right now. I mean, yeah. I'm fast. I'm explosive. I still train hard. You know what I mean? Like, but it's it also taking me. you like the time to fucking figure out what works and what doesn't. Like, yeah, you need all those it, fucking It took fights. me a very long time to figure that out. So, yeah. so I get this fight. First, first pro fight. Um, ruin this guy, right? Oh no, actually, let me tell you this. So, I go there. Paul Herrera, who I don't know if you know, who Paul Herrera uh -huh. is. He fought in the early UFCs. He's the one that Gary Goodrich fought. Gary Goodrich got him in a crucifix. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. the fucking and dog shit out, out of just him. Bang, bang, yeah, bang, just bang, ruined bang. him. So that was uh, nasty. That was a nasty yeah, one. Because it was like ten unnecessary ones. Yeah, like, yeah, right, right. And then John's like, "Whoa, I think he's still conscious. I don't know." His head was just moving back and forth yeah. from the elbows. He was out from the first one, but he yeah, ate he like ten more. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so Paul, I get there. Paul's like, "Hey, man, like the guy you're supposed to fight pulled out, so I don't have an opponent for you right now." I'm like, "Oh fuck, dude. I'm like, I'm 155 pounds right and now." And I drove all the way like, the fuck out here. I feel like shit. I drove an hour, almost an hour and a half. Like that's what sucks what I mean? too. People like, don't think about that shit. That you guys are going in feeling like dog shit you yeah. just cut 20 fucking pounds like in a week or something i was still shit. cutting weight on the way over there we're driving with the heater on windows up i'm Ugh. chewing fucking starburst spitting in a cup like you know what i mean I'm, i got a sauna suit on yeah and you're know basically I mean? wearing a trash bag yeah i'm making everyone everyone's suffering with me my teammates yeah. were suffering with me it's so kind of part of it yeah it yeah. is like you know what i mean you 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 get that brotherhood from your from your from your teammates yeah so i get there paul's like your guy pulled out don't worry i'll find you a fight i'm like whatever he's like keep cutting weight don't worry about it i was like cool Sitting around, comes after me like 10 minutes later. Hey, I got you a fight. Fuck yeah, I'm stoked. Sweet. So, go to weigh in. I step on the scale. 155. Bam. Flex, on the money. Right? Yeah, on the money. Perfect. The other guy gets on the scale. Oh, 170. What the fuck? This guy's 20 pounds. Yeah. yeah I'm like, what's going on, Paul? He's like, what? Oh, no. I tell the guy, I'm like, why are you 170, bro? It's like, this fight's at 55. He's like, no, I fight at 170. I'm fighting 170. I was like, what the fuck? Damn. So, I, Paul comes up. He's like, what's the problem here? I'm like, this guy's 170, Paul. I'm 155. What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh, I didn't tell you it's at 170? No, you didn't fucking tell me it's 170. You said you had another guy. Oh, well, Damn. you want the fight or not? You know, and basically like saying, fucking take it or leave it. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in so those days, like, it was kind of like, take it or leave it because there wasn't yeah. anything else. That was the only show in town. Yeah, and it was it was at a tattoo convention. Like, yeah. it was it was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I'm like, you know what? I was like, fuck it. I'm taking the fight. Fuck it. You know what I mean? So whatever. We do the face off. Dude, it's day. almost like you're getting fucked in every instance here. Like, yeah, and it's like, like and it's, it's a test, and you're just like, fuck it, I'm gonna blow past this test. Yeah, right. And I'm like, I'm super mad, but I'm like, fuck it, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna smash through it, no big deal. So we get the fight, we come out, we fight, I ruin the dude in two minutes, knock him out, nice. elbow the shit out of him, just I split his, I split his head open, nasty style. Ugh. And so I never fought again. He didn't. He retired after that. No he, shit. He never fought again. And Retiring um, 
So I did that fight. Fuck yeah, super stoked. I made 60 bucks because <laughs> <laughs> my first $60. <laughs> <laughs> because I had to do my medicals and my medicals were like 800 bucks or something. And my coach Brian Bro. funded me the money. He paid yeah. for it for me because I didn't have the money at the time. Like, cool. Now I'll use 740. Yeah. And, yeah. and oh, and another thing that I forgot to mention is I quit my job as an electrician. I was making 60 bucks an hour doing prevailing wage electrical work. And I quit that so I could fight. And Fuck. I started working at some fucking shitty ass little uh, uh, store called. Uh, uh, chick sporting goods is where I was working. Oh, yeah, who, yeah, yeah. who dicks bought like out dicks. chicks, yeah, which yeah, yeah. I thought was kind of funny too. <laughs> what the fuck? We rule the world, bro. Yeah, it's so, like it's like this is like a fucking movie. I swear to God, this whole universe. I feel like somebody's writing this shit. Bro. I know, I know, and like so so much of my life has been like that. Where it's, it's too much. It can't be just. It's too much coincidence going yeah, on. Yeah, for real. So I make my sixty bucks. I give Brian the rest of my purse. I'm like, sweet, you know what uh, I mean. Next one, I'm making like, I'm make, I'm gonna make a thousand bucks. Like yeah. I was stoked. Yeah. So I was fighting, boom, boom, boom. I think I had, I think I fought one more time, and then Ultimate Fighter tryouts came out, and it was one seventy. It was the one that Tony Ferguson won. Oh yeah, yeah. So I had tried out and monsters. Yeah, I, I wanted to try out. I sent in my stuff, and then I, I got a hold of, um, I don't remember who it was. I want to say it was, I think it was Joe Silva or uh, Reed Harris. I got a hold of one of them. Shit, Joe Silva. Then. And I was like, hey. Makes uh, the matches, right? I mean, yeah, Joe Silva's a matchmaker. Yeah, but I, th- I honestly think it was Reed Harris that I got a hold of, who's uh, another suit for the UFC. And uh, Reed was like, hey, man, you know, I- I've been hearing good things about you. Like, there's a lot of people that tell me good things about you. He's yeah. like, but you only have two fights. I'm like, I know in the limits, three fights. I was like, but. You know, I, I promise you, if you let me try out, and if you guys, you know, at least let me try out, you will not be disappointed. Like, just let me yeah. try out. So he's like, you know what? We have so many guys trying out. He's like, honestly, just get some more fights under your belt, just evolve a little it's bit. Probably the best thing and you could then done come for back. You. Yeah. So I was like, I was a little hurt, but at the same time, I was like, all right, I'm gonna do these fights. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make them know that oh shit, this guy was fucking serious. But dude, like that happens. I feel like they're throwing in guys in there right now, like now, because because it's run by Hollywood. They're throwing guys in there that are easily marketable. Well, I'll, way too early in the I'll game. I'll tell you a little insider thing about that too, but go ahead. But it's like, but it's like, like for example, like Sage Northcutt, right? He looks good, talks good, whatever. But now yeah, he, he's he looks like, like a fucking superhero. Yeah, but now he's he's he's, he's got, I think he's got two losses in a row or three losses in a row, and it's like you guys are throwing your guy at the wolves. You know what I mean? Like he he yeah. he beat Mickey Gall, who's like he was new in the UFC, but it's like. It's hard. No, for, Mickey Gall beat him. I mean, sorry, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Mickey Gall beat him, and he was he, new in the UFC. He beat he. Yeah, he beat he got the first guy choke. who I don't remember. I don't remember the first guy he beat, but he just demolished. That yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. Right? The dude went to throw some weird side kick to the face, fell down, and then he just swarmed him and knocked. Yeah, him out. yeah, yeah. It was uh like a Mexican dude. I feel like yeah, he had like dreads uh, or Lopez. Something. Yeah, I don't, something I don't remember Lopez. his name, but you could tell that guy knew he was gonna lose because yeah. the wins. He was just like yeah, yeah, yeah. He's sorry, like, I'm here, guys. <laughs> Sorry, you had to deal with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Bro, poor like, me. Give me some confidence, man. Yeah. So yeah, I, 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 but I feel like he jumped. He got in. Might have gotten in there too early because it's like now you can't. You don't have. The time, bro. Like you gotta be good at everything now at this point in the sport. Yeah, and he's really good at striking. But you know what? His he's at Faber's. Suit. He's at Faber's camp now, and he's actually doing yeah. really good. Honestly, Team Alpha Male. Yeah, he's doing pretty good now. Hopefully. So yeah, we'll see. You know, only time will tell. Because he's, he's young. young. As fuck. Yeah, he's, he's young. young as fuck. He's got a whole career ahead of him. But bro. that's what I mean. Like you, you, you know, you, you want to get. We all want to get in there right away. But it's like you know, it's, people know they're like ah. There might some be something with you, but you, yeah. you don't fuck it up yet. Don't blow when your mind. When you're young and you're just that cockstrong little bastard, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you don't give a fuck about that fuck shit. You're like, no. get me in there. And, yeah. You know what I mean? You don't, I'll, you don't I'll figure see, it out. Yeah, you're not smart enough to know to know that yeah. kind of stuff yet. Yeah, the insight. So, so you get your fights in. You fucking knock everybody out. I think you had like eight knockouts or some crazy yeah, shit. Yeah, seven. I got seven nights. So so I fought those two fights. I got denied for the ultimate fighter. And then I fought five more times, all knockouts. Finishes in the first round, second round. Bro, it was so crazy um, when that was happening. I remember it was, it was just like... Like, what the fuck? This is so crazy. This dude's knocking everyone out. Yeah. Like, and I would just bust him out, too. Like, because I would knock him out and I wouldn't be hurt. So I'd yeah. take my Rockstar week after the fight, I'd relax. Yeah. I'd come back right back in the gym and then training. No and injuries. Yeah. A couple weeks later, it's like, whoa, we got to fight this this day. You want to fight? Yeah. Give yeah, me a fight. F- fuck it. And then I wouldn't know who I was fighting until like a week or two before the fight. Yeah. So I was always like, whatever. I'm just training, doing my thing. And yeah. I mean, at that level, it doesn't really matter anyway. But still, the anxiety plays into it a lot. Yeah. When you're like, if you know who your fucking opponent is and all yeah. this shit and you know, your marketing. And you, yeah. You know? And I also contribute a lot of my. A lot of my re- relaxation when I'm fighting too, being in street fights and all the danger I've been in 100%. in my life. Yeah. Because even John told me one time, he's like, honestly, he's like, I don't, he's like, he's like, don't take this wrong way. I don't want you to get too big headed, but you're so relaxed in there. He's like, I really love, I love to watch you work because you're so relaxed and you're methodical and I could see that you're thinking in there. Yeah. Like, you're not just out there fighting. 
you're smart, you're relaxed, you're not blowing your wad, you're pacing yourself. You I know can see you, you sometimes when, when you're when you're fighting. It's almost like you're like measuring shit out. You're like yeah, and I'm a studier, so yeah. like I'm um, I'm always studying the other guy when I'm fighting. I'm watching, yeah. him, I'm getting him to do stuff that I want him to do, so I can open expose those holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. manipulate. So um, I'm fighting. Ultimate Fire tryouts come out. I try out. There's a shit ton of dudes there. Second bro. time, it's like 400 people there or some crazy shit, right? There was more, and I think there was like 600 or 700 people that tried out. Fuck. And we were in a. Uh, palace station in vegas there was one of the one of the ballrooms and the line went around the fucking room it went around the room snaked in this one area went out the door and then down a damn hallway fuck and i got there they're like okay be here at 7 a.m and you know me it's all day so be here at 7 a.m and we'll get you in so i was like i was there at 7 a.m i didn't get i didn't get to the front of the line until i want to say like nine or ten Damn. And when you get to the front line, you have this big ass book application that you filled out. I had yeah. a little CD, which was like highlights from my fights and a little story about me. They want yeah. like, you know, they want to see how personal you You're are. Or whatever. Yeah. They want to see your personality because it's a show at the end of the day. Yeah. And then uh, what they did is they would take, I think, 30 or 40 people at a time because there's so many people. Yeah. So they would take those people. They'd be in there for whatever. And then um, so when they took me, I think I was there. I was there at seven in the morning. I didn't get taken until six at night. Is when, when I got when I got ten like, hours or eleven hours later. Yeah, so we go in there. We do we do a grappling round like a ninety second grappling with round, who? Just other people that just are there. Just random guys. Yeah, whoever's in there. So they're yeah. like, okay, you and you. They'll call names. Okay, you guys grapple. Yeah. We don't want to see. Which I I didn't hear this, but they're like, we don't want to see leg locks. We don't want to see anything dangerous. If you have a guy in a sub, know you have him in a sub. Don't fucking hurt anyone. Otherwise, yeah. we'll we'll tell you fuck off. You know what I mean? No one's here to get hurt. We yeah. just want to see what you're, what you're capable of. So. I'm grappling with this dude. I go to shoot him. I take him down. He fucking guillotines me. So I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I get pissed. And then the whole time, he's like running away after that. Like, haha, yeah. I got you. You're not going to get me. Yeah, kind of yeah. playing that game. So I got mad. I ended up getting him down. And then I jumped and went for a heel hook. And I didn't pull or nothing, but I just grabbed it and I had him. And he tried to wiggle out, but I was like, I got you. You're yeah. not going anywhere. Yeah. Bam, I let it go. And then uh, we get up. We go again. Bam, time rounds. Why didn't they want leg locks? They just want to even get hurt. It's so uh, dangerous. Oh, because like, it's easy you, to get. Yeah, 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 yeah. You could yeah. easily blow someone's knee out. Yeah. So You're such a fucking delicate. My knees are bothering me, shit. So, <laughs> so we do that, and then I get up. I get up from that. And my coach Brian's like, "You're a fucking asshole." I'm like, "What?" He's like, "Didn't?" He's like, "Didn't you hear him say like no leg locks or anything like that?" And I was like, "Honestly, no. I just yeah. saw red." And yeah. This motherfucker pissed me off because he subbed me. He got me with that guillotine yeah. in like 20 seconds, so I got pissed. I was like, "Well, whatever. I didn't hurt him. I don't give a fuck. They yeah. know, like, you know what I mean? They know what's up. They know I had that motherfucker." So we did that, and then they made cuts. I was there with Dave Weber. Me and Dave Weber tried out. What's up with him? Um, he's not fighting now. He's doing a uh, physical therapy, teaching, him. teaching, uh, grappling to cops and stuff. He's actually doing pretty good now. He's got, got like one of the craziest bodies. Yeah, dude. He's, 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 he's called Captain City. America. He's called Captain America. Bro. That was that... his nickname. So PD gave us all nicknames. Oh, no shit. He's Captain America. Alan was the thing. Fucking, uh, Herman was Spider-Man. I was the Punisher. No, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, who else? Oh, uh, there was this dude Jamal. We called him Aquaman because that motherfucker sweated like a son of a bitch. He had to bring like three gym, three shirts to the. Gym. Oh, I remember that dude, black dude. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, he's and he always a king. he was kind of a weirdo, huh? Yeah, I don't know why you sweat so much. Though. I was like, I dude, don't know. like ridiculous. I would hate grappling <laughs> with him, bro. Because you you touch it, it's like a wet. I'm like, god damn it, bro. I, I remember used to, like, used to tell him like, go change your shirt, bro. Yeah. Well, I, so when I used to work at the gym, I used to work at the front yeah, counter. Yeah, yeah. He came in one day and he was like sweating like out of breath. And I'm like, I was like, whoa, bro. Where you come from? I was like, what's up? You running from the cops? Like, what's going on? <laughs> He's like, oh, no, I just drank some tea, you know? I'm like, you drank some fucking tea and you're out of breath and sweating? I'm like, get yeah. the fuck out of here, bro. I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, are you, like, are you on drugs? Like, oh, that might have been it. I'm like, it's cool, bro, if you do. Yeah. Like, I mean, honestly, I, I drink, I smoke weed. Yeah, like, what's yeah. the big deal? You know what I mean? Like, it's no big deal. I was like, but you need to, like, relax, man. Like, you don't look so good right now. Out right now you're sweating. I think he was. Yeah, I think he was He was doing something. So It makes sense. Yeah, so whatever. But, uh, so I keep my trying. I just try out for the Ultimate Fighter. So you didn't get in that time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, okay. So, they make the cuts after the grappling. Then we do mitts. We hold pads. Brian's holding pads. We're hitting pads. Um, they make cuts again. After that, they I made the, I made that second cut. Dave didn't make that cut. Uh. And then, um, if you if you made it past that second cut, then you talk to Craig Plegian, who is the the head producer of the show. Like and the you, gotta, you gotta see your personality. Yeah, and you, that, that's where they do the personality part. So, my interview was pretty fucking, like, at first, I didn't think it was so good, but it, it was actually, turns out to be really good for me. So I get in there, we're sitting in, we're, oh, you know, before we're walking over to sit down to, for the interview, one of the guys that I had fought before was there. Uh, oh, shit. What's his name? Uh, shit. Uh, he had a mohawk. We both had mohawks, which I was pissed about because I was like, this motherfucker's got a mohawk. I have a mohawk, dude. <laughs> there's only room for one mohawk. Yeah, there's only one. There can only be one. <laughs> so, uh, oh, uh, Rodney Roden was his name. 
So yeah. he was there, and he was with like a little kid. I don't know if it was like a little cousin or his little yeah. brother or whatever. But he's like, I was like, hey, what's up, bro? What are you doing here? He's like, oh, I tried out, but I didn't make it. Like, yeah, I was like, oh, cool. He's like, what are you doing? I was like, I tried out, and I'm about to do the interview right yeah. now. He's like, oh, that's cool. And he's like, hey, like to the little kid that was with me. He's like, hey, this is the guy that I fucking slammed on his head. Yeah. I was like, yeah, too bad you end up fucking underneath me right after. Then yeah. you're getting your fucking ass beat in your own corner, and then I just walked away because I was yeah. like, fuck you, like yeah. who the fuck are you, douche. And then whatever, I, I I shouldn't have reacted the way I did, but I was like, whatever. I had that pride issue at the time a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sitting in line. They call me in there, and it's like a huge, like a uh, almost like an oval table, and there's like four cameras, legit cameras. It's there's it's, like it's six an audition. People. It's an audition, yeah. And I was kind of like, well, what the fuck is dude, going that on? That shit'll dude? get you so like, oh oh shit. Yeah. What is this? <laughs> and I was like, what? Like, I was like, I I I I, th- I was, thought I was being funny. I was like, oh, some kind of porn going on in here yeah. or something. You know what I mean? And the guys like, oh. oh, oh. You know yeah. what I mean? I was like, oh, okay, this guy's being all serious, George. Tough crowd. Yeah. So then uh, I'm sitting there. He's like, so your name's uh, Vink? Yeah. I was like, it's it's Vince. I just don't spell it with an E. And he's yeah. like, well, you know, Vince is spelled with an E, right? And I'm like, no, it's not. Not for me. I was me. like, my name is Vince, and I spell it like that, and it's my name, so I spell how the fuck I want. Like, yeah. you spell your name how you want, I spell my name I want. Let's leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> So then he's like, whoa, okay. And I'm like, what's up, motherfucker? <laughs> Already, like, about the name. Yeah. He's like, you know it has an E. He's like, no, it, it doesn't, yeah. asshole, actually. So, so, so then he goes, well, why, do, why, why is that? And I'm like, okay, let me explain it to you. When I was a kid, my mom used to call me Vinci. Mm. Like, that was her little name for me, you know what uh, I mean? Vinci. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. when I was learning to write my name, I thought Vince with the E was Vinci. My uh, full name is Vincent, but yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So I was like, okay, when I started writing Vince, I just took the E off thinking that was Vince. Yeah. And then E was Vinci. Yeah. So, uh, so then I tell him that and he's like, oh, that's kind of funny actually. Like makes sense now. And I'm like, okay, cool. Cool. So then he's like, okay, you were born in Lancaster. You grew up in Canoga Park and now you're in Simi Valley. And I'm like, yeah, he's like, oh no. He's he's like, then you grew up in Simi Valley. Now you're in Sherman Oaks. And I was like, yeah, he's like, man, just one shit hold to the next, huh? I'm like, basically, and <laughs> here I am. But I mean, Sherman Oaks is pretty nice. I like yeah, Sherman Oaks. Oaks is nice. That area. spot you had there was dope. It was right. Yeah, it was that a that apartment. Spot. It yeah. was. And that fucking rooftop. Yeah, the rooftop that was the size of the whole sick. of the size of the townhome that I was in. Yeah, like, the whole the whole like, apartment. I had some rage over there. Yeah, it was tight. And so, uh, so he goes, oh, he's like, you're in Sherman Oaks, now, huh? I'm like, yeah. And then, uh, oh yeah, so he goes, one shit hold next. I'm like, yeah, and here I am. And he goes, oh, Sherman Oaks, huh? He's like, I just live in Sherman Oaks. He's like, how do you like it? I'm like, it's all right, but there's a lot of weirdos there. He's like, weirdos? He's like, it's a nice area. What do you mean? I'm like, Armenians, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, what? I was like, I was like, I don't want to sound too racist, but like Armenians are kind of weird. Like, they're they're hard for me to like, honestly, because they're they're almost like a too proud people, and they fucking smell like cologne. And they're very masculine, fuck. bro. Yeah, they're very like I'm King Dingling kind of person. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. I kind of butt heads with people like that because I'm not that way, and I don't yeah. like I don't like people that are like that. That think yeah. they're better than someone else. You know what I mean? Because no one's better than anyone else. Like we all have our own struggles, we have our own yeah. our own pros and cons. But like you know, that that's just the way I feel. So then he's like, "Well, what what's your problem with Armenians?" Well, let me, I was like, "Let me give you an example. I live in this complex. The place I live in, there's a lot of Armenians. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm maybe one of four other white people that live in that place, and they think you're Mexican. Yeah, and they think I'm Mexican, <laughs> and they're probably speaking. They speak Armenian to me sometimes, thinking yeah. maybe I'm Armenian. You're like, are you Armenian, bro? So, no. Uh, no. Yeah, so there's this one guy and his wife, and they have a, they have a little daughter. And every time I see the dude, and, you know, I mean, his family, I'm always like, "Hey, what's up? Like, I'm friendly. You know, if yeah, I see yeah. people, I say hi to him. You know, I mean, I'm yeah. not just gonna walk by and be like, nah. You know what I mean? I say hi to people. Sharing like, a I'm building, a, yeah. I'm a super friendly person. So one time I saw him in the elevator and I was like, hey, what's up, man? How you guys doing? Yada, yada. And he was, he was with this chick and with the kid. And he like he looked at me and then just looked away. So I was like, oh, maybe maybe, maybe I'm like hi. And he didn't, I didn't say that very loud. And I was yeah, like, yeah. what's up, man? How you guys doing? Like I said a little louder. Yeah. And then he looked at me and started speaking, saying something to me. But and I didn't understand what he was saying because he wasn't speaking English. Yeah. So then I was like, oh, I was like. Well, I was like, what happened? I was like, do you not speak English anymore? Like, what the what the hell? And he's like, oh, I'm with my family. I'm with my family, bro. Like, okay. And I was like, whoa. I was like, okay. You don't need to be fucking be an asshole about it. Yeah, I was I'm like, just saying hi, yeah. bro. I was like, I won't fucking talk to you more than okay? Like, fuck. All right. So then I told him that story, and I was like, you know, that's, that's just it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm like, it's not that I don't have friends that are that are Armenian, like I do. And but like, I think it's that it's also that area, bro. It's a very douchey area. Yeah, right? it is kind of like they're they're very bougie over there. Yeah, they fucking everybody has a nice car and everybody. Yeah, like, nice hey. car, living in an apartment. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> Mercedes exactly. motherfuckers. Yeah, which I hate people that drive Mercedes because they drive like they're the only motherfuckers on the road. So if bro. you have a Mercedes, just know that I probably despise you already a little. I have a Mercedes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Rick. I don't like you. <laughs> so. So then you're 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 so, telling this guy. His so I tell story. him that. Yeah, I tell him but that. He's filming all this. I bet he's filming it. And Craig goes, "Hey, you know I'm Armenian, right?" Yeah.
So then he's like sitting there. He's like looking at the papers, and he's like, "Oh, he's like, oh, Pichel, huh?" He's like, "Your last name?" He's like, "That's what is that?" I was like, "The last name's French." He's like, "Are you French?" I was like, "No, I'm, I'm Dutch Italian or yeah. Dutch Indonesian and then half Italian." He goes, "Oh, he's like, well, what's with the name?" I'm like, "Okay, well, the story is when when my uh, grandparents, they my my grandma, and grandpa, my mom's side, they uh, lived in Holland at the time of World War II when Hitler was basically kicking down doors, kidnapping people, and, and throwing people in camps. So they Real had shit. friends, yeah, they had friends who were French." And their last name was Pichel. Uh, so what they did is they basically took on their name where part of their family to get out of the country so they wouldn't be persecuted like with, with the Jews and everyone else. Do you and know your the real last names? I don't know it, but I, I, I mean, I've seen it, but it's I can't even fucking pronounce it, honestly. Oh, like, shit. it's such a weird word. There's, like, no vowels in it. It's weird. Yeah. It's super weird. <laughs> It's got so no vowels in it. It's got, like, Y's and X and a W. Like, it's, you know, it's super <laughs> yeah. weird. Not that those aren't vowels, but whatever. Yeah. But uh, so, um, so then I'm like, I'm telling the story. I'm like, yeah, so they basically changed their last name to get out of the country, to flee the country, and they came yeah. here, and they kept it the same because to pronounce their name, what it was, was fucking mayhem. You Impossible, know what I mean? yeah. And plus, at the time, everyone that came over to Ellis Island, they were all changing their names to yeah. make it more American. You know what I mean? Yeah. To, trying to stay under the radar. Yeah, and they were trying to leave that part of their life. You know what I yeah. mean? Because... Like, honestly, when I think about it, like, I, I feel like, wouldn't they have the sense of pride to come here and keep their name? But then, like, when, when I say that to, like, all, the, like, you know, my grandparents, other people like that, they would be like, well, at the time, it wasn't about pride. It was about... Survival. Bro. It was about survival and being persecuted for being the kind of person you were, yeah. your religion or your race or what have you. So they changed their names to be more more palatable to Americans, to make them more Americanized, you know what I mean? Because yeah. America was this country where... It was founded on immigrants, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and Which is kind of ironic. It is, it is. <laughs> it's ironic. And I mean, despite all the stuff that's going on right it's now, insane. especially. But you know what I mean? Like, it, that, that's just the way it was. So they, yeah. they kept the last name. So I told him, and he's like, oh, he's like, well, has anyone ever told you you look, uh, you know, Hispanic? Yeah. And I started laughing. <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah, everybody, bro. Yeah. And he goes, he goes, what, what's so funny? I'm like, bro, I'm like, you need to really pack your shit talking. I was like, if you're trying to hurt my feelings, you fucking suck at it. Yeah. Dude. Like, you need to fucking practice. <laughs> And so the all the produ- the other producers are like snickering at him. Yeah, he gets funny. he's fucking pissed at this oh, point. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, All right, I think I'm fucking done with you. He's like, fuck off now. Yeah. I'm like, really? He's like, Yeah, I was like, see ya, game yeah. of salute. And I fucking walked out the door. And when yeah. I walked out, I was like, fuck, did I just fuck myself? Like that's what they were looking for, bro. Yeah, and, and I didn't know, you know what I mean? So I was like, I was just being me, you know what yeah, I mean? I was just being my good. normal fucking self, poking yeah. at him, you know, poking at the bear. Poking at the bear, yeah. So I get out there and uh um shit, what's his name? Uh, Gary uh Gary DeFranco, who is another one of the producers, he's a pretty, he's a pretty main, one of the other main producers, basically uh-huh. stepped down from Gary. Two Garys ran the shit. Gary, he comes out out of the door right after me, and he's fucking laughing. He's like, bro, he's like, that, you fucking killed me in there, man. I was like, what? I was like, that wasn't bad. He's like, he's like, nah. He's like, that was probably the best interview that the Ultimate Fighter has ever and will ever see in, in probably in my life. Because everybody's nervous in there, bro. Yeah, everyone's nervous. They're being all anxious and whatnot. I mean, I was nervous too, but I wasn't going to let, I wasn't going to back down. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was kind of a bad guy of the back sound. My back's against the wall. I'm fighting out of that. But also, like, a lot of fighters, athletes, a lot of athletes don't have much personality. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you run a, a lot of these guys are real fucking quiet. They're just. They don't talk. Yeah, they're shit. super soft spoken. They're shy. They're they're afraid to be themselves. Yeah, which yeah. I'm not. I've been through so much mayhem. Like if people don't like me, they don't like me. I don't fuck give it. a fuck. You know That's what, what I mean? it is. Like, I, like am, it or not. I am a people pleaser. Like for yeah. the most part, like if if I can make someone happy, I will. You know what I mean? But, but at the same someone, time, yeah, if it comes down to it, I'm not going to sacrifice who I am to make someone else happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going to be myself, and they could hate me or they could love me. Because that's entitlement whatever. on their behalf. They're exactly. Like, you need to change for me. It's like no. Exactly. Fuck and out of here. Like you're not better than me. I'm not better than you. I'm being me. If you like me, cool. If you don't. Yeah, fuck off. I don't like you either then. And then boom, you got in the house. Yeah, I got in the house. Um, I the got Ultimate call. Fighter, for those of you guys who don't know, it's, it's, it was a, it's still on. It's a reality show where it's, um, how many fighters? 12 fighters or something like that? Uh, no, way more. 32 fighters start off. Yeah, you fight and then sixteen go in the house. It's like a, it's like fucking it's like uh, the real world, but everybody fights each yeah, other. Yeah, the real world, but you fuck each other up. Yeah, and you guys, <laughs> and everybody's smashed. They're drunk. There's a oh, lot of yeah. alcohol. There's a lot of alcohol in that house. Liquor, booze, anything. They give you a list. There's there's basically a sheet on the counter in the kitchen, and on the sheet, excuse me. There's there's your name, and you have four or five lines. You write down whatever the fuck you want, whatever you. I mean, almost anything. Yeah. Besides, Drugs and yeah, hookers yeah, yeah. and shit like that. Yeah. But I bet somebody put it down though. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, we did. We put condoms down for Darren Krushank and they yeah. came the next day and we're like, "Why do you have condoms? You fucking queer! What are you yeah. doing over here?" <laughs> so, uh, 
<laughs> like we're just teasing funny. them, you know? Yeah. So then, uh, so you'd write it down and the next morning it was like Christmas. All your shit was there or it was in the fridge. If it was Damn. refrigerated, like it was, it was fucking awesome. That's how they create a fucking crazy show though. Where people yeah. are trying to kill each other in that house. <laughs> yeah, dude, exactly. So dude, uh, I remember when you were on that shit, there was a, there was a, there was a bar up in Santa Clarita, everybody from the gym. We'd go and watch. Oh yeah, the sports bar, right? Yeah, the sports bar. I forget what it was called. It's, it's not there. Yeah, anymore. and it's like a physical therapy place now. But we would all go, and and when you were fighting or whatever, and we'd all we'd all watch like the fucking fights as and be like, shit, Vince is fighting, and and the whole place would be wearing like a Vince shirt or some shit. Yeah, because like, Herman was making shirts at the time. Yeah, so Herman making was, shirts yeah. for me. My yeah. cousin was making shirts too. It was crazy. Which I didn't bro. even know because I was on the show and I'm, yeah, you, I'm, we could nobody could talk to you. Yeah, I was sequestered. I didn't I didn't have no outside contact. Like when I okay, so when I tried out for Ultimate Fighter two, I was working for AAA for swings towing doing uh, AAA yeah. work. I was driving around selling batteries and selling batteries. I quit my job. I, I quit my that, job. Yeah. I left my my girlfriend uh, at the time, Kelly, with enough money. I think I left like three, four, maybe five grand, enough to pay the bills for three months because I was going to be gone for three months. Yeah. You're like, oh, so, uh, here's the money. Hopefully we can figure this shit out. Yeah. So I was like, here's the money. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I don't want to leave you like stranded to pay for everything. So yeah. here's money. Like, use what you need to, whatever. Like, yeah, because you're taken care of too on a show. You don't have to spend shit. Yeah. And they paid us to be on the show. I was yeah, being told too. I was going to pay like 500 bucks a week or something, yeah. which was cool by me. You know what I mean? That, that pays my bills. Yeah. So I was like, cool. And then uh, I quit my job and they were like, are you sure you want to quit? And I'm like, I'm not looking back. Yeah. Like, I'm, this is a make or break for me. Well, but, AAA is always going to be there, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, <laughs> if I don't make it, you know, of course, I'm going to probably kind of want to come back and get my yeah. job back. You know what I mean? Hey, Whatever. man, can I get my job back? <laughs> I just want you to know that like, I'm probably going to quit though because I'm yeah. I have, I have, I'm, I'm going to make it. I, yeah. In my head, I'm making this. So they're like, okay, cool. I try for the show. My first fight, super nervous. I'm in this hotel room. They give us... Like, I can't leave my hotel room. I can't talk to anyone. They took my cell phone. That's crazy. They took, like, my clothes, everything I had. You guys had. had a Twitter. That was it or something. I didn't even have the Twitter at the time. Uh, it was something like that. After think, you guys started tweeting or something. Yeah, no. yeah. I think I had I had my Facebook, my private Facebook. I had my fighter page, Facebook, my Facebook. And then I had an Instagram. I just started Instagram because that's when Instagram started coming around. Yeah. And then uh, I, I didn't even know what Twitter was. So I try out. Um, we're in this hotel room sequestered, getting medicals and stuff done. And then uh, they're like, okay, fights are March 1st, Friday night. Um, be ready. You got to make weight Thursday. You're fighting Friday. Be ready. I'm like, so we're all like, who are we fighting? Uh-huh. You'll find out. You'll yeah. find out night of the fight. Okay, whatever. So we're sitting there, and I think we did – actually, we found out a way in. So we all weighed in, and then we're sitting in the UFC gym. And, I mean, just looking around there, I just felt like so, like, so yeah. accomplished. You know what I mean? Even though I wasn't anywhere and I wasn't anyone – but there was guys there. There was like, uh, who was think, there? You think about that fucking tail around the goddamn hotel where 600 and plus people were yeah. trying to try out for yeah. the show. And and from was 30 that, you guys. From that to the bottom 32. And the guys that were there were like Ally Quinta, oh, damn, um, James yeah. Krause, Still James, fighting, uh, yeah. Miles Fury, um, damn, a lot of who fucking else? Good guys. Justin Lawrence was there, Sam Cecilia. Mike Chiesa, Damn, he's, yeah, um, like a lot of the guys that were on my season are still in the UFC. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or like yeah. a lot of the guys who did well in, in the show were still and in the And the coaches UFC. were Dominic Cruz and Uriah Faber. Dominic Cruz and Uriah Faber. So uh, we're sitting there and they're like, okay, um, you guys aren't on teams yet, but you know, stand in line. We're going to tell you red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, and that's your fucking corner. And then that's, oh, your, that's your team for, the, for your first fight. So I got picked on Dominic Cruz's guys. He had uh, Phil Davis, Lloyd Irvin, um, Ross Pearson, I think Shannon Slack, and they were all like, "Okay, like they're interviewing me. They're like, yeah. okay, like what? What's your skill set?'" And I was like, "Like they're like, how much training you have, yada yada." And I was like, "Honestly, like I've I've been training for since 2007, yeah. two years. So Damn. I don't know. I'm like, if you if you guys and all those guys in there, are like a lot of lifetimers and shit too. Yeah, well, actually, no, the Ultimate Fighter was in 2012. I've been training for five years. At okay, time. still either way, five yeah, years, seven, not that long. Yeah, yeah, five years. So five years." And then uh, they're like, okay, well, what do you like? What's your skill? What are you good at? And I was like, well, I don't know. What do you want? What do you want me to say? Like, if you tell me go for a double leg, I'll double leg. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I know if you tell me go for a kimura, I kimura. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I know basic commands, so yeah. I don't know what you want me to say. And they were kind of just like, well, whatever. Then you know, what I mean? we're just gonna let you fight, and if we yeah. whatever. And I was like, okay, cool. Just let me let me do me, and yeah. then if you see something that I don't see, or you know what I mean, opportunity. Let me know. Yeah, let me know, and we'll, we'll work it out. So I, I'm I get matched up against Cody Fister. Right away, he's fucking mad dog me. Dude. I'm going to kill you. You're fucking dead tomorrow. That's what I'm going to up. Yeah, you're getting murdered, yada, yada. And I, I was just laughing, dude, because I was like, you need to calm down, bro. Like, well, it, it, <laughs> the thing is that you've been through shit, so that shit doesn't work on yeah, people who've been through shit. Kind of, I'm not intimidatable, like, bro, you know what I mean? On. Like, people don't intimidate me. And so I was kind of laughing, and, and poor soul. He, he got super mad. And so, like, we fight. We end up getting the fight. Ended up murdering him. Just dude, you smashed him with Destroyed him. Yeah, just destroyed Split him. Split his head Split open. Split his head open. 
bled I bled all over the FX mat the FX part of the mat, which yeah. that was when FX first took over the oh, yeah, UFC and they had that contract. So yeah. I was told by the producers they're like, Yeah, the guys at FX, like they fucking took that canvas and they, they cut out the part of the FX with all Cody Fisher's oh, blood shit. on it and it's hanging up in their fucking office. Like, Hell yeah. They want you me. to sign it. And I was like, I'll fucking sign it. Tell Fuck me yeah. tell me where I gotta sign. So now in the FX office they have that, that canvas That's still hanging up fuck. in their shit with his blood all over it. For for what I know. Yeah, you know yeah, I haven't yeah. been there, so I don't know. But uh who gives a fuck? That's so fight. I was like, fuck yeah, that's badass. That yeah. made me feel good, you know? So I yeah. make it. Dana's like, hey, man, good fight. That was fucking awesome. That's like, crazy. Dana White's fucking, fucking talking to you. And he's yes. like, hey, that was a great fight. Yeah, and, and I was like, like shit, where uh, am I? Yeah. So, uh, thank you, Dana. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> yeah, for real. You know what I mean? And then like, I'm in the big leagues? What the yeah. fuck? And the Dominic Cruz, the Bantamweight champs, like, that yeah. was fucking sick. You know what I yeah, mean? Like, yeah. they fucking, like, Ross Pearson. I was like, fuck yeah. Like, I see these guys on TV fucking yeah. people up, and like, they're like, telling me, like, that was badass. Shit, up until like a year ago was still the champ. Yeah. He's a sick he, ass commentator now. He was a he was a dominant he was a dominant force. Except when he commentates commentates my fights, fucking prick. Oh, oh, he yeah, was talking is. so much shit my last fight. He was probably because he knows you though. I know. I think he was trying not to be too biased, but yeah. still, man, you got to talk shit. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. Anyway, um, so I make it on the show. I did very well. I fought him. I fought uh Kofer. Um, oh yeah, let me tell you this. So going back to the the Hollywood thing where they want actors or whatever. Yeah, on the yeah, fight. yeah. So Silva told me. Um, that him and Craig Bleasian used to always bet on the guys. So oh, the way it? the way they picked who made it on the show was Joe would pick sixteen guys and Craig would pick sixteen guys. And they would bet, okay, this is my guy, I got a thousand bucks on this guy, oh, a thousand shit. bucks on that guy. And they would you know what I mean? They would bet against the guys yeah, yeah. who would win. And I was one of Joe Silva's guys. Joe Silva loved me. Oh, so Joe shit. picked me, and I ended up fucking smashing on Craig's guy. Because so Craig, like, I think Craig wanted to see me get my ass kicked. Yeah. Because he's a little mad at the shit. Yeah. Cause uh, oh yeah, because fuck of, yeah, because of the interview. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the second the second interview too, I did with Craig. I walk in there, and then he's like, he's like, why do I why do I look at you and I just instantly hate you? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I'm the guy that doesn't like Armenians. He's like, oh that's right. He's like, maybe you should just leave now. And I was like, fuck you. I was like, I ain't going nowhere, bro. I'm going nowhere. So I sit down. I told him bro, fuck you, and I sat down. That's why he he like he he had to know you were fucking with them too. Yeah, yeah, like. Yeah. So and I got I kind of got a laugh out of him. So yeah. I was like I was like, like I'm good. Yeah, I was like I'm good. He loves me. So then uh So you start fighting through and 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 how many fights was it up until you went to the Ali King to fight? I fought Cody Fisher to get in. I fought um Kofer, John Kofer, and then I fought Chris Saunders. All three of them you won. Yeah, all three of them I won. I finished I finished Cody Fisher, I finished John Kofer, which got me an extra 5 grand each and then uh I, I, mean, that I just uh, dominated uh, nice. Chris Saunders. Yeah. Chris Saunders was actually a tough dude. I, like I like I hit people and their fucking eyes cross or they go down. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And typically their eyes like typically they go down. Yeah. But I hit Chris Saunders and I seen that dude's eyes cross like four or five times in that fight and he would not go down. Like he was a tough. That shit dude. could break you trying to break someone like yeah, that. Yeah, it's discouraging hitting someone with everyone you have. It's like that dream where you're just fucking someone up and they're laughing at you. Yeah, you know you're what hitting I mean? like with that. fucking haymakers and they're yeah. like, ah, I'm good. So there was that, and then when I actually fought Chris Saunders, I was in, he hurt me bad because uh, he had good kicks. He had really strong leg kicks, and he was chopping at the lower part of my leg to try to slow me down. So I, I found out later once I got off the show that I had actually a fracture in my shin from him kicking me yeah. in, my, in my little right above my ankle. So then uh, when I fought Al, I was limping like that whole week because you know uh, I, mean? I fought Chris on Friday and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we weigh in again. He just fought Habib. Yeah, yeah. And he did he did, really he well. He did really well. He actually did. He exposed a lot of a lot of. Yeah, he did. Habib. And I think that if Tony, if Tony would have been there, I think Tony would have taken that fight seeing that. Yeah. I was like, Damn. I honestly think Tony Ferguson would be Khabib. That's what I think because so yeah. of his wrestling, because he has good wrestling defense and he's dangerous off his back. Where Al's not a Al's not a dangerous guy in jiu uh-uh. He's a wrestler. Like, yeah, he's a, he's a wrestler, so he yeah. has that good wrestling defense. And he's but he a also good comes boxer. from uh, Matt Sarah's camp. A lot of jujitsu out there, so I don't know how jujitsu. He is. does, but his jiu-jitsu is not that good. Yeah, it, that's his that's his Achilles heel. He did he did yeah. well against Khabib though. But yeah, he definitely way. did. And uh, so I fought Al injured, and and when like I mean Al knew that so. Yeah. When I fought Al, when he fought when Al fought everyone else, he was boxing, slugging. He didn't throw. He threw maybe two kicks in the yeah. four fights that he had. But when he was fighting me, constantly chopping my leg, chopping my Damn. leg, because he knew it hurt. Yeah. And so like that's what you do though. Yeah. I, honestly, I don't blame him because I would have done the same shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we live in the same house, so he knew. We all knew. Yeah. You know what I mean? We you know see who's limping, who's fucking yeah, hurting. Who's... We know. So that aspect, like he beat me because of that. And I honestly feel like we should have had a third round, but whatever. I'm not gonna dwell on the past. He won. Good, like you know, I me. Mean, good job, but. Like after that, I was like, 
so he fought in the finale. He fought Michael Key. I said the finale. I didn't fight the finale because I was yeah. hurt. And I told him I don't want to fight. Like, I'm injured. Yeah. And so, like, Joe Silva was like, don't worry about it. We like you. We're giving you a contract. Just oh, dope. heal up and we'll get you a fight. I was dope. Like, Fucking awesome, dude. Like, it was such a big relief to, to be not worried Give about. Give the nod. Yeah, yeah, not worried about, like, fuck, I need a fight on this night. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so all that last week, I got to fucking hang out and party and have fun and kind of just... Watch the fights. Yeah, watch the fights and enjoy everything. Because I had a lot of friends that came out too. So yeah. I was just hanging out with my friends. You know what I mean? I had a, I had a good fucking time. Like, it was really tight. fun. I got to see everyone for once again in, in three months. So yeah. normally the Ultimate Fighter is six weeks. Yeah. And that's it. Like, Why did it guys, go for three months? Because it was live. Uh, so my oh, season was the yeah, only yeah, live yeah. season. I remember so that. We would, fight, we would fight every Friday. There was a fight every Friday. And uh, that that was just the way my season went. And that's the only season they did like that, and that's probably the only season they'll ever do like that because of the farmman. It was no hard. one watches TV on Friday. Not anymore. Everyone's out partying, you know yeah. what I mean? So it is what it is. But um, so then, so you got the contract, and then and I then your the this is where this is where it gets crazy. Yeah, where it's like I, I go back to Big John's. Dominic and Eric Del Fiero invite me to uh, train over at Alliance. So immediately I was like ecstatic, like fuck yes, these yeah. dudes love me that much. And have that much like confidence in me that they want me to train with them. You know what I mean? And, and it's, what the fuck was it? San Diego, right? Yeah, San Diego at Alliance. And I was like, you know what? I'm doing it. Yeah. So I opened the Jongs. I told my coach Brian. I was like, hey, like, I want you to know that I'm still Big John's guy. I'm still part of the team. Yeah. However, I had this fight in December, and I'm gonna train at Alliance. Yeah. I was like, uh, there's a lot of guys there. There's a lot of good guys there that I want to train with and get some time in, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, there's good guys here too. And I was like, I know. And these are the guys that like got me to where I am. But these guys, guys are at a whole new level. To. Yeah, like it's the UFC. And like me making it to the UFC, I knew that it, it would be hard to get there. But I didn't realize how hard it would be to stay there. You know what I mean? That's the hard part. And to keep my to keep my sanity and stay in the UFC. So I'm a... Uh, I'm telling him about this, and he's upset. So I'm like, listen, you're still going to be my main coach. You're still going to be my corner, but I'm just going to be out there training every week. And then, you know, yeah. every other week I'll be out here training. I remember there was, like, a weird air in the gym. Like, yeah. Like, everybody's like, oh, man. And I didn't know, but at the time, I guess, like, the gym was kind of falling apart. I'm not sure what was going on, but, like, I kind of felt like maybe it was me a little bit that I left. That it was a combination it, but... of a lot of things. A lot of fighters that were leaving and yeah. coming back. And it well, happens in the sport. And that's the process of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we would have fight team tryouts. We'd take 20 people, and then... Next week, only like eight people would show up because yeah. the rest of them thought it was fucking easy. You yeah. know what I mean? They think fight, being a fighter is easy and it's yeah. no big deal. And then you're when, there five days a week and like, I'm fucking dying. Yeah. When, when I tried for the team, I thought they were going to pay me. Yeah. I thought I was going to get paid to fucking train. <laughs> They're like, no, bro, you got to pay us. They're like, yeah, you're paying us 120 bucks a month, <laughs> which I didn't have a fucking job to even pay yeah. these motherfuckers. Like, like a decent job to pay these motherfuckers. Like, dude, my plans are ruined. Yeah. And at the time, I, I had I moved out of Sal, living with my buddy Sal because his brother, I'd, I was getting along with his brother. I was having issues and... Like, I left before an uncomfortable position turned into a bad position. You yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah. So, Which is probably the best idea anyway, because yeah, you were there like... Yeah, you know. and I, I left before things got bad, you know, because yeah. I, mean? I could see it. I'm, I'm a very perceptive person. So I left, and I was living with uh, my friends, who I've known for years, too. Uh, but They're Butters. Their last name is Butter. I call them Butters. But there's two twins, and then their brother, Corey, who's my age, I went to school uh, with. And so I was Butters. renting. I was renting basically a corner of their room, so like... I had a twin bed that was like, they had a closet. He had a closet that was like across the room, maybe like twice of that closet right there. Yeah. Like across this wall. And I had a twin bed and that little piece of the closet was mine. Fuck and it. like, that was my little area. <laughs> you know what I mean? A corner of a room. And I paid him 200 bucks a month to live there. Hey man. And like, that worked. I mean? yeah. And, and that, that was my life for a little bit. And then, you know, I lived there, I was training, I was doing my thing and, you know, me yada yada training. And then after that, then I ended up moving, moving out of there because another kind of weird situation with like Jared, I could tell, like I was yeah. kind of, I was kind of, I was taking my welcome, you know what I mean? A little bit. Yeah. He, yeah, I could tell that he like, cause he always had like, he had girlfriends and stuff. So uh, I was kind of like, you know, I was kind of a cock hanging around. I guess, for him. Yeah. I was hanging out. I was like that, that like, fucking, fuck. that third wheel for him. You know what I mean? Fuck Vince, get out of here. Yeah. So, and I would let him too, honestly. Yeah. Like I would just like, let me give me a heads up and I'll leave yeah. and, or I'll fucking sleep downstairs. Like no big deal. Yeah. Just, don't be fucking on my bed, rogues. I don't want yeah. you should tainted my shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so then I left there and I ended up uh, my friends, another good friends that I had, Shooks, uh, who Alan, Alan Shook and oh, his, yeah, his yeah, wife yeah. Chris. So they he took me. See in. me no? Yeah, he just moved. Actually, they live in Florida now. Oh shit. So, um, they took me and they're like, "Hey, we got a trailer on the side yard. If you want to live in the trailer, you know, pay me yeah. a few hundred bucks a month, and you know, I mean, we're good." Yeah. And then also, uh, Chris, his wife was a VP for this credit card processing company, so she got me a job too, a decent job oh, where nice. I was making good money. I think I was making like fourteen bucks an hour, which is dog shit. But, but back then, it was a lot of money. Yeah, that was that was a good money for me because I was making eight bucks an hour at this fucking sporting goods store that I was at, wow. slaving away all yeah, like yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. So, so, so when you started training at at Dominic Cruises, how how long was that? 
or alliance, I should say, before before you went to your your first fight in the UFC? I was there. So I got the UFC when June. I took a couple months off. I started training again in September. Is when I started okay. get back in the gym. I took I took a few months off just off. to yeah. let my heal leg up. heal, let my body heal, yeah. kind of just hang out and just enjoy myself. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I was in a three month pressure cooker, bro. Like yeah. you're in a house with a bunch yeah. of other motherfuckers trying to kill you. And like I love fighting and it's my passion, but at the same time, I was like, I need to be away from it right it's now. It's just stressful, you know I mean? bro. Yeah, I don't I don't want to I don't want to fucking see a gym, be in a gym, or yeah. talk about a fucking gym or training or anything right now. You yeah. know what I mean? I just want to enjoy my my time with my girlfriend. You know, Sam Cecilia came out and visited me. Like we hung out and stuff. Like yeah. me and Sam are still good friends. You know what I mean? I, I go visit him. I went to his wedding. Like okay. you know what I mean? Like that's tight. I, I made good friends in on that show. Um, the enemy too but whatever yeah so um i'm training at alliance for my fight you know and and i don't want to bring too much sore subject to it but eric if wanted to manage me i told him no and then i kind of got i kind of got shined on a little bit over there like they kind of he kind of pushed me to the side after that yeah yeah so i was like whatever i'm just trying to do my thing i went into the fight unprepared because i let them basically dictate my training camp yeah and, you know, when I went back to Brian, Brian's like, "Hey, this guy's a fucking wrestler. Like, are you? He's he's a he's a Greco guy. Like, he's looking Sambo. to fucking slam you on your head. Like, yeah. are you practicing shit?" So I'm like, "Yeah, these guys are. You know, I'm getting taken out all the time by these guys, and you know, I'm training with Michael Chandler and all these guys, and these guys can't hold me down. They, yeah, they could barely take me down when I'm fucking punching and kicking them. Like, yeah. and Mike, they, I think Michael Chandler's kickboxing champ right now at at uh, or he's, sorry, he was a lightweight. Yeah, he was a lightweight champ for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And so like, you know what I mean? Like, he's a good wrestler, and he would get me down, but he couldn't keep me down. Like, no one could keep me down. Like, yeah. I just I don't know what it is, but I'm just super good at getting up and I'm good against the cage. So, you know what I mean? I did very well. And I was like, whatever. But I went in that fight. But uh, before that fight, I uh, I had sold my street bike. Actually, my Honda that I had, I had wrecked yeah. drive, driving to the gym yeah. before I got in the Ultimate Fighter. I was I got hit on the freeway and basically my bike got snapped in half. But I walked away unscathed. I flew over like cars, landed on a car. God damn. Like landed kind of landed kind of like on my hands and knees and doggy paddled myself up to my feet as as cars were like driving past me still and the half the bot the back half of my bike was with me facing the opposite way sitting upright still running and the front half of my bike was still underneath this car because this dude i was splitting lanes i was in the car between the carpool and the fast lane over the double yellow this guy went over the double yellow to go in the carpool lane Mm. right where the four or five and the five meet i know what's that and uh I, I slammed right into him. There's nothing I could have done. You know what I mean? I was doing like 55 miles an hour. But you need to get a tank. That's what you fucking need. I know. But then I would, I would I'd murder so many people. No, true. I'd murder That's people because yeah. I'd get such bad road rage, dude. I'd run yeah. cars over. And uh, so... <laughs> so so you go into this fight and then it doesn't end up going Yeah, I go to this well. fight. Oh, yeah. So so the backstory is I sell, my, I sell my truck. I sell my street bike. I buy this little VW Rabbit so I could commute down to San Diego every week. Yeah. I'm driving out there Monday mornings at like 2 in the morning to miss traffic. I'm driving back Friday afternoon. Um, and that, that was my life for a while. Yeah. And then the, the car that I bought, I bought it from this dealership, public motors in orange County and they sold it to me with a broken motor mount and with metal coat hangers holding the fucking shifting cables together. It was a stick. I shit you not. It was metal fucking coat hangers zip tied to the fucking, to the clutch, uh, lever and to the uh, cables where the cables go back into the car where the pedal is. They probably never did an inspection on that car. Oh no, they did. They're the ones that did it to it. Oh no shit. Because I did research. I, I got a Carfax. I went to every dealership and got every every single report that was on that car and i found out that car was in a wreck and it was it was being passed around from dealer to dealer because no one wanted it uh, and then i damn. found out why is because it was wrecked it got t-boned in the front and then public oh, motors bought this thing and then did what they did rigged it and rigged sold it, it up you. and sold it to me 30, so 30 30 when i'm i'm in the back i'm training for my fight i'm like getting ready and then i remember when i'm walking out to my fight all i can think of is like when i go home i don't have a car I couldn't Damn. drive the car anymore because the engine was falling out of the fucking out, motor out mount's the car. broken. Yeah, the motor yeah. mount's broken. So like, and I called the dealership and was like, "Hey, like this car's fucked up." I remember you that they were to, fucking assholes about yeah, it. Yeah, I was like, "You guys need to either give my money back or or fix this fucking car legit." Yeah, like, you know what I mean. But I don't want you fixing it. I want to take it to a VW dealer and have them fix it. Yeah, none of those coat hanger shit. Yeah, and they're like, "Well, how do we know you didn't do it?" And I'm like, "I've had this car for a month." Yeah. I have full coverage on it. Why would I rig my car in such a way? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it doesn't make sense. Your fucking argument is stupid. Yeah. You guys, whether you know it or not, sold me the car like this, and you yeah. need to make this right. They basically told me, fuck you, fuck off. We're not doing shit. So, so you're thinking about that shit going into your fight instead of yeah, the fucking so fight. Yeah, so when I'm walking on fight, I'm thinking about that, and then I get into the fight, and then I'm okay, I'm fucking fight this guy. And then I remember we're fighting, and, and I'm kind of testing the water, and I'm playing on the outside line. Because Eric Tofiero was like, just stay on the outside line, which was a bad idea because he's good against the cage too, pulling people off the cage. Yeah. And so, um, bam, I get slammed in my head. I'm like, okay, that wasn't so bad. You know, no big deal. Like, he's just throwing me. It's not really hurting me. Yeah. 
The second time, bam, it snags my head, and I kind of got rocked from it a little bit. And I remember everything being just slow motion because I was like rocked, and I was still defending myself pretty good. But then I, I remember I like I need to get up and get away from him. Yeah. So I get up, and then he goes to like grab wrap me up again, and I remember trying to like push on his arms, and I was pushing on his hands trying to break the grip. And when I did, he went over my arm, but it was like. It was such slow motion because I remember he he pulled his hand away and I was still like this and he wrapped up both my arms or uh, I think just one arm actually and I got stuck and then like I went up and I was like oh fuck it real again, boom and then I remember I remember hitting and I remember like going to push myself up and then I blink and then I'm pushing myself up again and everyone's in the ring ready and I fuck. knew immediately like fuck I got knocked out because yeah. I've been knocked out I've knocked myself out before yeah. like on dirt bikes and shit so yeah, I'm yeah, like yeah. fuck that's I got a nasty feeling out. yeah and it was like. Immediately, first like, loss. Fuck yeah, my first loss. He got knocked out. It was in the first round, like a matter of minutes, and so like that was a like that was a hard thing for me to take. It was a hard pill to swallow, man. Like I I fucking cried. Like even till like today, it's still like the emotions I had still hurt me, man. Like that was okay. a hard thing for me to go through. And I was there with like my my chick who like my ex fiance. A lot of time I think I think I don't know if we were engaged at that time. No, we weren't, we weren't engaged Not then. Yet. We were still dating, and then like you know with her and her family and friends and stuff, and then. We we're kind of just hanging out partying and i remember like i remember just being so sad man and like i felt like no one gave a shit you know what i mean everyone yeah. was partying and just having a good time because we're in vegas everybody's and, on celebration mode yeah, and you're so, having the worst fucking day of your yeah, life yeah so that kind of hurt me too and then like you know what i mean like it was just kind of like insult to injury where everyone's like let's go out and party and i'm like i don't even want to be in public right now yeah they're trying to get your mind off yeah it probably. i know but i was just i was so embarrassed and so like you know what i mean that was my first like real loss you know what i mean like that like it was just a, it was a really hard thing for me to go through, and I got injured. I hurt my shoulder in that fight, um, so I had to get surgery. I was out for 2013. I remember then, that uh, you had a fucking physical therapy. Like, yeah, really my shoulder. Me. I was I was dude. I had to recoup. I had to get my bicep reattached. God damn! I couldn't lift a plate of food for six months. That so, shit'll fuck like, with you too. Yeah, it, it was a it was a very humbling and hard thing for me to do. I couldn't even wash myself. Like my girlfriend had to fucking wash me, dude. Yeah. Like I couldn't I couldn't do anything with my arm. You're I was, helpless. I was fucked up. Yeah. So then um, I'm good. I come back 2014. I fight in January. My comeback fight against uh, Garrett Wiley. I do good. Dominated him. I felt great. I was super healthy. Didn't get injured in that fight. Till Silva, what's up? Give me another fight. Yeah. So it was like, cool. I got you. Anthony and Jaquani in May. You fucked him up. UFC 173. I was like, fuck yeah. So in the fight with Anj- Jaquani, in- in- first 30 seconds, he throws a right hand, breaks my fucking orbital, breaks my uh. face, gives me instant double vision. In the same Damn. altercation and the same exchange, I, I poked him in the eye because I, I reached out to stop him to basically like yeah. face face bomb him. And I poked him in the eye as he hit me. And so the referee stops the fight, goes to cater to Anthony. You know, I'm sitting I'm sitting in my side of the cage and I'm You're like, seeing three of this motherfucker. Yeah, and I'm like, fuck, my eyes fucked. I'm trying to rub it, but I just have gloves and there's like grease yeah. on my face. So I'm like putting grease in my eye, and then I'm yeah. like, I'm trying to get my shorts to like wipe my eye with. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? I'm like, just give me a towel. Yeah. So the ref, Mark Smith, comes over to me and he's like Hey man, he poked him in the eye, yada yada. I was like, dude, I get poked in the eye too, bro. Look at my fucking eye right now. Like yeah. my shit hurts. I was like, can I get a towel or something? He's like, no, I can't give you nothing like that. I was like, why are you fucking catering to this guy, but you're not letting me fucking clear my eye? Like, yeah. what the fuck? So then, like, whatever. And then he's like, okay, accidental, like, yada yada. We continue the fight. As I'm still fighting with double vision. So I'm like swinging, I'm missing, I'm getting tagged. And that first round, I remember like, fuck my like something's wrong like yeah. I, my I my vision is not coming back like what's going on so scary i go yeah super scared and he's knocked out half of his wins more than half of his wins so yeah. i'm like i'm gonna get knocked out again like fuck yeah. so i go to the corner i tell brian i'm like hey dude like i can't see out of my left eye like i have double vision right now like I, if i close one eye i'm okay but i can't i can't fucking see dude fuck no you can't fight with one eye though. yeah i was like i don't i don't know i don't know what to do and he's like why do you need to see i'm like what i was like because i can't fucking see what i'm doing he's yeah. like dude and fuck that he's like slip a jab do something, get a hold of this guy and throw this motherfucker around. Dude, and he's that's like, exactly what you did, yeah. bro. Yeah. He's like, he's like, what have you been working on? I was like, wrestling. He's like, well, go wrestle, fuck this guy. He's like, you can't see, you don't need to see once you had a hold of him, right? He's like, you can you can grapple eyes closed, right? We do that. I'm like, yeah. He's like, go grapple with your eyes closed. So I was like, fuck yeah, dude. Like, that was what I needed to hear, honestly, because yeah. at that point, smart. I was kind of like Raquel Pennington in, in her last fight where I was like, I'm done. I don't I'm know done. what to do. Yeah. Dude, that was so mad. I, and, they, they uh, didn't let her fucking... She, they should have let her fucking get out. But she's like, I'm done. Yes and no. It's like, I'll, let, we'll talk about that afterwards, yeah. but I'll explain another side of that yeah. that, may, that might change you to that. Because I got turned because I felt the same way. Yeah. So Brian tells me that I'm like, okay, cool. So I end up slipping one of his jabs. I get a hold of him. I'm fucking tossing this dude around. I end up knocking him out in the second round. I had him turtled and I, and I threw an uppercut underneath his armpit, knocked him out. He went limp. 
And I'm like, fuck yeah. I knew I knocked him out. I knew he was out. So I was like, yeah, I'm like bonus shots. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like swinging more. I wake him up. I wake him back up, fucking punching him. He gets up, runs, hits the cage. And, you know, we continue fighting. So yeah. the whole, the rest of the two rounds, I'm just tossing him around, picking him up, slamming him, just beating on him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just ruining this dude. I am winning the fight, you know, I'm decision, doing my thing. Afterwards, I teased the referee, Mark, because I was like, dude, I was like, he's like, hey, man. He's like, I know it was eye poke. You know what I mean? Because I think he got stopped again because he was trying to say I hit him in the nuts, which yeah. I did. It, it was yeah. like, I mean, it was kind of low, but I hit him on his belt, which yeah. is legal. I didn't hit him in his cup. I didn't touch his cup, but yeah. Mark was catering to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, dude, why are you catering this guy? Like, just because I'm black, you're going to yeah. fucking, you're going to like cater to this guy? And he was like, what? <laughs> like his, his reaction to me was like, yeah. what the fuck you're saying? And I was like, well, <laughs> I mean, you look how you're acting, bro. Yeah. Like you fucking totally went to him, but not to yeah. me. You know what I mean? You didn't even let me, you didn't even give me a towel or anything to clear my eye. Like that's yeah. fucked up. So he's like, hey man, it's just, we're caught up with emotion in the moments. You know, I'm sorry, yeah. yada, yada. So I was like, whatever, no big deal. So I have double vision, right? Um, I took, I got my job back at AAA, but I was just working weekends and then yeah. I ended up working full time again because wow. I, I needed the money. Yeah. And, uh, because I was out for 2013. So I basically, yeah. all my ultimate fighter money, I blew through. Because, yeah. Savings are gone. Yeah. And Sherman Oaks is an expensive fucking place to live. Fuck yeah, it is. You so, were right off of Ventura Boulevard, bro. Yeah. It's, I was Ventura and Kester, man. Like expensive. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Cause I think our rent was like two grand a month at that place. Yeah. So, uh, so, so yeah, I'm, fucking I'm injured. I, I got I got double vision. I tell my I tell AAA I'm like, hey, I want to come back to work, but I honestly can't. I can't drive. Like I have double vision gnarly. I can't see straight. I had to like if I was the need to see straight, I had to look like this. Damn. Because I had to use. This Did you get surgery? Eye. What the fuck you doing? Yeah, I had, I had to get surgery. I had emergency surgery that night on my face. They had to put a plate in my eye floor right here because I had entrapment in my eye muscle. So the eye muscle was getting caught in the fracture. And there was God so much, damn. so much, uh, like swollen tissue in there that it was like cut, creating a problem. And so I, I didn't know at the time, but I probably made it worse in the fight because I was blowing my nose out because my uh, sinuses were fucked up. So like, yeah. And he hit me in the nose a bunch. My nose was bleeding, so I remember a couple times like blowing my nose out, which was a bad move. I should have sucked it in instead of out. Yeah. But uh, you know, whatever lesson learned. So uh, I double vision. My boss is okay. I'll give you, I'll give you a couple weeks. You know, hopefully it comes back. I'm like, cool. So he hits me up like two weeks later. He's like, hey, how's your vision? I was like, it's pretty fucking bad bro like yeah. i might not be back for like a month or two he's like well i'm gonna tell you what he's like you have another week if you don't come back in a week he's like you don't have a job damn i'm like for real he's like yeah and this guy his name is tom he's a fucking asshole he got hired in there after me and ever, ever since he got hired he's been trying to fire me and i want to say six other dudes Just to basically like hire his half-wit friends uh because he's in some stupid little motorcycle club some little bullshit wannabe mm -hmm. hell's angel motorcycle club and like yeah. you know what i mean like he was just trying to hire his dumbass friends, which yeah. he got one of them hired. And this guy is a fucking total idiot. Uh, there's there's so much bullshit to this fucking story that I like. It would take me hours and hours yeah. to tell you all of this. But so long story short, I go I go back to work with double vision. I'm driving with one fucking eye. If uh, I needed to make a right turn, I would look at my right. If I needed to go left, I would look at my left eye. Damn, try that. Yeah, it was it was fucked up, and uh, like I couldn't look down, so I was like this looking, working on thing, and like. It gets to the point where some some members from AAA would be like, "What's wrong with you? Are you okay?" And I was like, "I just I have double vision. Like, yeah. I'm a fighter. My face got broken. Like I I can't see. <laughs> my face right is now. broken. I can't see straight. I'm sorry. I don't know what you <laughs> want me to say." So November of that year, that was May. I fought November of that year, which I still had double vision. I got a I get a call to change a tire, which I was a battery guy. I wasn't supposed to change tires, but mm. one of the tow truck drivers who was buddy buddy with one of the dispatchers was like, "Give the fucking tire change to this guy because I don't feel like fucking doing it." Basically. Yeah. And so she gave me the call, and I'm like, I'm not supposed to be doing that. Like, I'm yeah. strictly on batteries. I'm the only guy doing batteries. Like, there's certain rules, you know what I mean? So I did the tire change. As I'm trying to change the tire, I pull my shoulder out. Fuck. The same one you got hurt? Opposite one now. Oh, fuck. So I pull my shoulder. I'm sitting there. I'm like, fuck. My arm is 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 basically in shock, numb. I can't move it. Damn, bro. I'm like, right away, I'm like, I fucking just hurt myself. And I was kind of embarrassed because I'm like, I'm a fucking professional athlete. And you I couldn't pull my arm out. I pulled my arm changing a fucking tire. Yeah. Like, what, kind of, what kind of bullshit is this? You yeah. know what I mean? Like to add more insult to injury. So that happened. I got hurt in November of that year. Um, I, I go to the doctor, you know, I check it out. They take x-rays. I'm like, I didn't break anything. It's muscle. Like yeah. I need an MRI done. They're like, well, whatever. We need a, we need an x-ray first. So yeah. So I'm like, whatever. I'm going through the process. They do an MRI. MRI is so shitty, you can't even tell what, what was in the MRI. So I had them do, and they were fighting me the first three months because that dude Tom was telling them, no, he's fine. He's he didn't do this. He didn't do this uh, at work. At work, he did this uh, training. Uh, fighting. 
Oh shit. Are we dying over here? I don't know. Your camera's just, dying. The screen just turned black and did something. Boom. These are all dying. Cameras oh, are dying. Oh yeah, they're dying. I'll have to wrap this up soon. Okay. Um so 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 you're uh you're going through all this shit. You pull your shoulder out and then and then you're still in the UFC? Yeah, I'm still in the UFC. I pull my shoulder. He's telling Workman's Comp to fight me. Workman's Comp fight me for three months, trying to just accept it. I had to give them the UFC's number, all my coach's number, because I was like, I haven't been in the gym since yeah. May, since my fight. So there's no way that you could possibly ever try to blame this on the gym. Yeah. I haven't been in the gym to coach, to teach, to even been to the gym. I've been home and work. That's it. Like yeah. relaxing, like resting. And so they finally, they finally accept the claim. You know, they they say, okay, we'll give a contrast MRI, get a good MRI. Shows that I have a type four slap tear in my labrum. I tore my rotator cuff and my bicep was torn. So I had to get my bicep reattached on this side too. I had to get major surgery to repair my labrum. And I was right back in the same fucking boat I was in 2013 when I fucked the shoulder up. Yeah. So now I'm going through, I had surgery actually. What does UFC say about that? Oh, they're like, they're like, okay, whatever. So, so then, then after that, because it didn't had, happen fighting. It was, yeah, yeah, it was but then work, you had so. to wait to fight again, right? Yeah. So I, I basically told them what was up. I was like, yeah, I hurt myself at work. Like, I'm injured. I need surgery. So, yeah. you know, me and Joseph was like, you know what? Don't worry about events. He's like, like Joseph, like I really love that guy. Like, you know, what I mean, he he's he, not there anymore, right? No, he's he was super cool with me, and like he was like, I understand you got hurt. Like, heal up. Let me know when you're ready. He's like, we'll basically just put your contract on hold. Yeah. You know? He's like, we like you. You're you're exciting fighter. So. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Heal up, and then you know we'll take care of it. So right away, that was a, that was a pressure lifted off yeah. me because I was I was immediately worried about the UFC cutting me. So then, they're fighting me. I finally get my claim accepted in January, beginning of January, end of February. My my fiance at the time now Kelly, we were engaged. She breaks up with me. Boom. Writes me some fucking bullshit note about. Yeah. You know, I don't feel like you're happy. I'm not happy. Yeah. This this doesn't seem right. Yada yada. This is like this is what I need, you girl. This is yeah. This, I'm at the shit right now. Yeah. And I was like, I was honestly on the ground being kicked at this point already. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? And then so your, her your shit's torn. You just your, more UFC. The girl's gone. Yeah. And so you know what I mean. So I, I immediately just started crying. I went in the bathroom, just was crying, and she came in there like, "Well, what do you want to do?" And I was like, "What do you mean? What am I want to do? Like, what can I do? Like, yeah. you want to fucking leave? Like, I can't stop. You know what I mean? Like, I love yeah. you, but." And I want, I still want to marry you, but if you don't love me, you don't want to get married to me, then you know, what can I do? There's no, way, I know I'm not stupid. I know I can't force you to love me. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to leave, then you know what I mean? Leave. Like yeah. there's, you know what I mean? I, I can't, I'm not going to stop you. Honestly, if you want to leave, then go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know what else to say. So that happened. Then I had surgery in March. So I you, actually, you, you're out fighting for how long from that point to like the point we fought again, how long was it? We weren't fighting. I didn't fight from. After 2014, I didn't fight until 2017. Which was fucking last Three year. Three years, yeah, last fucking year. And you, you thought about throwing a towel in, I'm sure, a bunch of times. Probably. Yeah, I thought I had to quit a lot of times. Um, I, That's why I joined the union, electrical union, because I'm like, yeah. I need to I need to go back to work. I need Something. To, I need to have a backup plan. Yeah. Like fighting, fighting, I make good money fighting, and, and I love it, but it's, it's there's no future in it, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like... It's kind of like throwing money in a wishing well and, and hoping you're fucking, you make it rich oh, when you get day, a knockout, you know I mean? yeah. yeah. So... So that happened. I had surgery on my face again. I had not have another surgery on my eye because my eye was still fucked still up. And I was good. pissed that my, my division wasn't going away. Fuck. I had surgery on my face again. And then a month later, I had surgery on my shoulder to get my shoulder fixed. All fucked up. So, it's all catching up. Yeah, I'm doing that. A month after surgery, I'm, I'm two months after surgery, I take my sling off. Work calls me. They're like, hey, we have partial duty work for you. I'm like, oh, you do? They're like, yeah. I was like, cool. Office work. Down. You know what I mean? So yeah. I go there. They don't have anything for me to do. I'm sitting in a chair all day, Fuck doing it. fucking nothing on my phone, playing games, making money. So yeah, so I tell them, and I'm like, hey, I'm like, what? What do you guys have for me to do? They're like, well, when we find stuff, we'll just have you do it. I'm like, yeah. so you guys don't have anything for me. They to don't do. want. They want to pay workers comp. Yeah, and they're like, no, not really. And I'm like, well, you guys, I, you can't be having me sit here like all day. Like this yeah. is a fucking waste of time. Yeah. And her response, the owner's response was, well, if we're gonna pay you to fucking sit and do nothing, we're gonna pay you to sit and do nothing here. We're not yeah. gonna pay you to be at home or partying and doing whatever you want to do. Damn. I was like, is that what you fucking think I'm doing? You think I'm home partying? I'm like, bitch, I'm going through the yeah. worst shit yeah. ever like, right now. <laughs> like, I'm at home. I'm resting myself. I'm trying not to hurt myself. Not I'm go going crazy. to physical therapy twice a week. Yeah. I'm going to the gym outside of that to try to treat, keep the rest of my body in shape. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even do more physical therapy because yeah. physical therapy you have to do every fucking day. So I was doing it on my own. Yeah. And then not to mention that dickhead Tom was in workman's comp ear constantly telling him that I'm I'm out of my sling and I'm in the gym and I'm training and yada Jesus yada. Christ. Even though like I was in the gym training, but I wasn't doing anything with my right arm. Yeah. You know what I mean? My you right can't. 
yeah, I couldn't. And yeah. when I went to the gym, I'd be I'd put my sling back on so I wouldn't do anything with my arm, and yeah. I'd be hitting mitts with one hand. You know what yeah. I mean? And he'd be in their ear, so they cut me off, paying me a couple times. Fuck. And it was it was a big whole ordeal where I had to, like I got a lawyer at a point because I didn't have a lawyer at first because I was uh, like, look, I'm not trying to get over on you guys. Yeah, I wanna I want you guys to take care of your responsibility. I'll do my part, and we'll get this over with the quickest possible. Yeah. When I had this shoulder, I was back working within ten months. I oh, no eight months, and I fought within ten months later. Yeah. After. Damn. Of getting the surgery. Yeah. So uh, I was like, so that's cool. You know what I mean? We'll go through this again. But they were like because of Tom trying to fire me, and, like you know what I mean, because of his issues. a monkey in that yeah. range. Yeah. He was he was fucking me bad. So workman's comp was was denying a bunch of stuff. They weren't giving me any more physical therapy. They weren't Damn. paying me. And then eventually I got a lawyer. I filed for disability because I I mean I wish I would have known that earlier. But yeah. I well, filed what, for disability. What, what made you what made you get over that hump and get to fucking even train to even be like you know I'm gonna have another fucking fight. Honestly, it was my anger. I had so much anger. Getting back to the roots. Yeah, I had so much anger like built up inside of me towards towards the fight, my last fight, because I got my face broken. Towards myself, because I felt like I, I was stupid in that, and and not yeah. letting my, you know, not being smarter in the fight, protecting myself, because I didn't respect his power. So I was like, "Hit me, yeah. bitch! Like you're not gonna hurt me." And you got um, broken off. I, I was mad at Tom. Like if. Like I've never really said this about anyone or anything, but if I could, if I could do what I wanted to someone, it would be Tom. And Dude. I would, I would fuck him up so bad. I would paralyze him for the rest of his life and God. not feel any ounce of remorse or regret or God sadness. Damn, this guy sounds him. like a real bad dude. That, that's how, that's how bad he, he ruined my life. Cause he's the reason I was out of fighting for three months or for three years. Damn. He is the fucking reason. And like, but, but but then so 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 fast forward through all that, we get we get we get through all that bullshit, and then you get back into UFC. Yeah, you're fighting in New I, Zealand. I start doing well. I you got to re you got to re reinvent yourself almost. Yeah, I, I I tell my manager like, hey, I'm healthy, give me a fight. I don't yeah. give a fuck who or where or what. Give me a fight. Jason's like, all right. Jason House. He's like, all right, I got you. Bam, hits me up like two weeks later. Hey, check your email. I'm like, why? He's like, we got you a fight. Boom. I was like, yes. He's like, yeah. what do you mean? I was like, say yes to it. Yeah. He's like, you don't even want to look. No, say yes to the fucking fight. He's like, it's not in the country. I'm like, where is it? He's like, New Zealand. I'm like, yes. Yeah. He's like, no. really? I'm like, yeah, let's fucking go. He's at like, this point, you're itching. Yeah. Itching I, I, I need to fuck someone up, dude. Yeah. I, need to, I need to let some of this out. Like, bro, you know? you'd be doing the whole world a favor by letting me yeah. fight this motherfucker. So so then he's like, all right. He's like, I'm telling Silver right now. He's that like, was Damian Brown. It was Damian Brown, yeah. Mm. Um, and then I'm like, what day is it? And he's like, June 10th. I'm like, okay, let me check. I'm out of school. Perfect. Take the fucking Boom. fight. Take the fight. Take the fight. Take the fight. Yeah. And we took the fight. I went out there two weeks early, I think. Two weeks before the fight week. Three weeks before the fight. Yeah. And then I stayed a week after. Nice. Or a week and a half after. Almost two weeks after. Got and to then, enjoy uh, a little bit. Yeah, I got to enjoy myself. Um, I didn't want to come home, dude. Like, yeah. I really loved it. I heard it's nice out there. It was fucking awesome. The people are amazing. The The scenery is amazing. Just the vibe. like. It's a real fighter's place, too. Yeah. I felt, I felt like home there, honestly. Yeah. Like. There's not a bug that'll bite you, not an animal that'll eat no you. Shit. There's no creatures out there. There's nothing like that. Not like, like Australia. Australia is the complete opposite. Yeah, yeah. everything you could, everything will murder you out yeah, there. Fuck that. But New Zealand is the complete opposite. Like it's just and beautiful. He's he's from New Zealand too. Damian Brown. No, right? no, he's from Australia. Oh, he was from Australia. Yeah, that's right, so, that's right. So after I knocked him out, uh, first round by the way, and that that yeah. was so fucking nuts. That was like shit. Vince is back. Yeah, and yeah, that was definitely a beautiful stamp uppercut. And letting everyone know that you know what I mean, like I'm back. Like, yeah, I'm here. Because I, I heard a lot of shit about ring rust and you haven't been fighting and yada yada. But I'm like, I've been fighting my whole life, honestly. Yeah. And like yeah. when I, when I'm fighting, when I typically fight, like when I was younger, like it's not like a planned thing. Yeah, like, I'd be somewhere and then all of a sudden it's like got a fight. So it's like I don't have preparation time. Figure that like, shit out. Oh, it's time to go. You know, yeah. it's time to go. It's time to go. So that's how it was. So I did that fight. I knocked him out. That was a good fight. Good fight for me. And you get what's what's his homeboy's name right after that? Um, uh, the Brazilian cat, Joaquin Silva. Joaquin. So Joaquin Silva's an undefeated guy. Tough motherfucker. Yeah, tough Brazilian dude. I mean, they're all tough. Those dudes are probably roided up most of the time yeah. anyway. But <laughs> a lot of dudes. So the dude's a beast. I was walk. I, I did. I did some research. I was watching him. Turns out this guy likes to stand and throw people. He's got heavy hands. Supposedly he yeah. stands there and he fucks people up. So yeah, I'm re. I'm listening to his interviews and stuff. He's telling people that. I'm not going to stand with him. You know what I mean? And yeah. he's going to basically stand there and just and fuck me up and throw bombs on me and I'm, yeah. I'm going to get knocked out. So I'm like, we'll see. We'll see who has real power. You know what yeah. I mean? So I'm playing with Joaquin. Immediately, um, I'm like, all right, let's... Because I, I, I changed my style up a little bit too. Like, I started yeah, I fighting that. more... I started, I started fighting more like me. 
like when I was fighting like uh, when I was fighting Injikwani and, and Garrett Whiteley and the fights before that, I was fighting how I was told to fight. Yeah. So now I'm fighting like me. I, I'm not. I'm not the kind of fighter who likes to be stationary. I like to be very loose, very fluid. I switch stances a lot. Yeah. I like to throw awkward angles. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I look for holes where I don't. Where most people don't think there's holes. I even saw that in the, in the, in the Damian Brown fight because right before you knocked him out, it's almost like you're looking like you're like okay, 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 cool, and you baited him in. Yeah, I was, just, I was studying him, dude. It was like ninja moves. You dodged all of his hits, didn't get touched once, and blink, snuck in an uppercut yeah. and knocked him out. I was like, ooh. So and so and you're that, doing so you're doing that with style, with, you know with Joaquin. So yeah, so with Joaquin, I was like, okay, he's he's gonna he thinks he's gonna stand bang with me, so. In the in the very beginning of the round, I was like, I'm gonna go after this guy. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna hit him with some power and show him what real power is, and then we'll yeah. see if he wants to fucking stand and bang with me. So, I I come right into him. I throw I think I throw a, a hook to the body, a right hook to the body, and then a right to the head. Cross his eyes, you know what I mean. Yeah. After that, Brink. he was running the whole time. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he he was dodging me. Yeah. So I couldn't really get off anything. I'm I'm picking my shots. I'm I'm landing here and there. I'm out striking him, but. You know, not really as, as well as I wanted to because it was a tough fight. Yeah. He's, he wasn't willing to engage with me. You know what I mean? Yeah. He wasn't willing to stand and bang with me. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm playing that game. The third round, I started getting a little tired. When I was in that fight, actually, uh, before the fight, I had staff too. So oh, when I've I had I that, bro. I just that, talked about that. That shit yeah. is terrible. I got that big jump. Terrible, yeah, bro. When, when I fought that fight, I had staff. So like. In my eyes, I was like, fuck, I don't want this to affect me. And, and it did a little bit, but I was like, whatever. But in the first round, It affects actually, your cardio. It affects everything, bro. It does. But in, in the first round, too, Joaquin Silva landed a good liver kick. Yeah. He kicked me in the liver hard. And if you, like, go back and watch now that I tell you, like, yeah. you'll see me, like, get kicked. And you'll see me go, like, blow out my air trying to, like, get yeah. rid of the pain. And then my hand, I just drop my hands. And then I'm like, fuck it, dude. If, if he's going to knock me out, he's going to knock me out. So yeah. I, just started, I just started walking towards him. I'm like, what's up? Yeah. And he backed up because I don't. My maybe you know I know he thought he he hurt me but maybe yeah. like okay maybe I didn't hit him that good yeah. you know what I mean it's that's part of the game too yeah I, it. yeah I poker faced him pretty good so you know we were fighting did that fight that was a tough fight but I came out on top um, which I'm glad because I don't trust judges like yeah I wasn't I wasn't super confident and when they're announcing the fighter too when they're announcing the winner Bruce Buffer's cut out his mic cut out for me so I couldn't oh, shit. Like, we couldn't hear and so when oh yeah like, yeah yeah I remember that I remember that yeah I couldn't it was hear. like a delay yeah and then so I hear him I, I I'm like trying to listen to him because he's like behind me so I hear him say unanimous decision and then I'm like I'm like thinking like fuck they better not have gave him unanimous there's no way he yeah. got unanimous and then boom and then I see him raise his hands and I'm like fuck. I remember that he raised his hand yeah. yeah he raised his hand and I was like no fucking way and then all of a sudden bam he raised my hand and I was like yeah ah! Yeah, that shit I was, was like, epic. Fuck yeah, dude! There's a picture I of won. You yelling, bro, and Petey's behind you like this. <laughs> yes, and we're yeah, we're both just so excited, but that's just great. So yeah, now you got man. now you got another one coming up. Fucking yes. what is it? June seventh? June June first? June first? I'm fighting in Utica, New York. I'm fighting Gregory Gillespie, another undefeated guy. Um, he's a super crazy good wrestler, but I don't give a fuck about that because this is an MMA fight, and we'll see how good his wrestling is once I hit him. Yeah, it'll um, be fun. It's it's gonna be fun. New York's gonna hate me. I'm sorry, New York, but I'm going there and I'm gonna I'm gonna be the bad guy. Put on ruin, a show. I'm gonna ruin your fucking day. <laughs> Boom. We're running in late, but it's time for some hot seat questions. <laughs> what was your uh, most significant fight before you like before you even thought about fighting? You know what I mean? Like a, a fight that you like a childhood fight that you're like, damn hell yeah. You know what I mean? Like one of those fights where you're like, I'm pretty good at this. Um. Okay. Um. It was. Remember, you're in a hot seat. I know, shit, man. I got a, I got a lot of stories like that, though. Get it out. Okay. First okay. one that comes to mind. So I, I was at this bar. Um, I'm with I'm with my friend Curtis, who'd passed away. Um, my girlfriend at the sham, Shayna, a long time ago, and her friend Tonya. And we're at this bar. Fucking Shayna Dude. was always at the goddamn fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was when I was in my punk stages yeah. being here. Like, she's actually she's actually a cool chick. But uh, so we're at this bar, and there's there's pool tables, and they're set up like the letter I. There's one in the center, and there's two on the outside. Yeah. So we're at the far one, and then there's like or an H. a bunch of dudes, or yeah, or an H, yeah. sideways an H, whatever. Yeah. But uh, so then um, there's all these dudes, and they're like kind of like gangbang types, you know what it's I mean? They're, they're all hall. choloed out, yeah. They're all choloed yeah. out. We're at a bar, they're playing pool. So they're like, "There's this other Mexican over there. Yeah, <laughs> his name is Vink." <laughs> <laughs> You're like, "What'd so you I, say, bitch?" So I fucking shoot, and I miss. And I'm like, "Fuck!" You know what I mean? And I, and yeah. I said a lot. I kind of yelled it. Yeah. So some guys like, "Watch your mouth!" And I was like, "Fuck off!" Yeah, and like you know, what I mean, before without even like looking, I just like, fuck off. So I look up, and it's this big ass Mexican dude, and I'm just Damn like, it. "I'm like shit." I'm like Curtis, don't let me get stabbed, bro. Yeah, <laughs> like, just don't let me get stabbed. If I gotta fight this guy, whatever, yeah. just don't let me get stabbed. He's like, "I got you." I'm like, "Cool." So I, me and the guy make eye contact. 
And then he's like, he just kind of looks away. doesn't say anything, looks away. And I was like, ah, oh, cool. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, awesome. So um, they take off. Those dudes take off. They go outside, maybe to smoke or something. And then my girlfriend and Curtis take off. They go outside to smoke too. And then I'm in there with her friend Tanya. And we went from the one table to the other table because uh, this couple wanted to be at that table because there was like, uh, a bar there and they had drinks and stuff. Yeah. So I was like, okay, whatever. So we switched tables. We're playing pool. I'm going to shoot. And uh, all of a sudden, I hear this commotion. And I look, and it's that big Mexican dude, and he's talking shit to my friend Curtis. Ooh. And so I'm like, I was like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? And Curtis is like, oh, this guy's fucking talking shit to me for some reason. And the guy's like, yeah, this motherfucker told me, shut the fuck up, fag. And I took offense to it because I'm gay and this and that. Shut the fuck up. I swear he said that, dude. So I, I like, I couldn't help it. I started laughing. And I was like, what this the big fuck? Mexican dude. Yeah, big Mexican that, dude. Like, big, thuggy looking Mexican dude. Like, in a, in a collar shirt common. with some, with some big ass Ben Davis pants on. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, hey, homie. Yeah. It's me and my boyfriend, dog. Yeah. So, like, so <laughs> I, I started laughing and I was like, dude, I was like, I was like, hey, man, no one said nothing about you being gay. And, like, you know what I mean? That's cool. Good for you. I was like, yeah. but that was me that said that. You yeah. told me to watch my mouth. I said, fuck off. I was yeah. like, you ain't my dad. You don't tell another grown man to watch his mouth. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know why you thought that was okay. Why yeah. you didn't think you were going to get a reaction like you did. He's like, oh, it was you, huh? And I was like, yeah, so leave my fucking friend alone. So then he comes, he comes up to me and he's like, he towers over me. He was yeah. like, he was like 6'4. He's a big dude. And so he kind of bumps me and I was like, hey, bro, like, I'm like, listen, I got the pull stick in my hand. So I'm like, I don't want no problems. Yeah. Let's just let bygones be bygones. You were wrong. I'm in the wrong. Like, let's fucking agree to disagree and yeah. score separate ways, dude. Like, I don't want to fight tonight. I'm here having fun. You're having fun. Like, let's, you know what I mean? Chill out. He's like, nah, fuck that. Now I want to beat your ass. Da-da. He shoves me again. So I'm like, dude, I was like, listen, I was like, I do not want to fight. If I put this fucking pool stick down, I was like, I'm not going to say anything else. I'm just going to start yeah. fucking you up, bro. He's like, oh, you think so? You little fucking pussy. Da, 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 da. Boom. Shoves me again. This time he shoves me like hard. So I was like, fuck. I walked out. I put the pool stick down. Bam. I just cracked him. Down. This dude, he spun a 180, drops to his knees, falls on the floor, starts snoring. Oh, no. So, so embarrassing. I man. just kind of shrugged like, well, you know what? <laughs> I, I warned him. You know That's what I mean? That's when you knew. Yeah. So I warned him. So then his friends come in. And they're like, oh, my God, what the fuck? You fucking hit him with the pool stick. Do, yeah, do, do, do. Yeah. And I was like, no, I didn't. I fucking punched him. I was yeah. like, this guy's fucking over talking shit. I told him, you know, I don't want no problems. And look, I'll knock you out, Yeah, I'm bro. like, look at him now. Yeah. So then I was like, well, what's up then? I was like, you guys want some fucking shit? You know, fuck that. One guy goes on the phone and calls the cops. He goes and calls the cops. Ooh. Oh, no, no. Actually, no, he didn't call the cops yet. He's like, you fucking hit him with a stick. Yo, yo. I was like, no, I didn't. I was like, pick your fucking friend up, dude. Like, yeah. get him out of He's here, snoring. bro. Like, yeah, we don't want no problems. So they're just leaving him there. So I start helping him up. So I rolled the dude over. And then he's like waking up at this time. So I'm like pulling him. I'm lifting him up. And he's like starting to come to. And he sees me. So when he realizes what happened or that, that it's me, he puts yeah. his hands up like he wants to fight. So I let him go. Yeah. Bam. He falls back down, hits his head. Snoring, out again. Snoring again. Starts God snoring again. Damn. So I started laughing. And then I'm like, dude, I'm like, honestly, bro, like pick your friend up and take him out of here for he fucking swallows his tongue. Like, yeah. bro, like get your fucking friend out of here, dude. God damn so it, then the guy's like, fuck you, I'm calling the cops. Bam, gets on his phone. I'm like, fuck. I could go to the bar and get my credit card because I got a tab. Yeah. Close my tab out. As I'm walking to the bar, the bartender comes up. He's like, here, drinks around me. I saw everything. You're good. Get the fuck out of here. I was like, for Boom. I was like, serious? He's like, yeah. I was like, sweet. Hell so yeah. I go outside. I'm on my I'm on my I had my motorcycle at the time. I had an, oh another motorcycle. So I jump on my Bad bike, news. I'm backing up. The guy's on his phone, he's like, Yeah, he's just fucking he's jumping on a motorcycle right now, right at the arena. His license plates. Hey, what the fuck? Yeah. My girlfriend Shayna grabs his phone. Smart. Closes it. It was a flip phone. Closes it and fucking throws it in the bushes. Oh dude. shit. And Teamwork, then, bro. Yeah, right. And then her, Curtis, and then Tanya all run to their car and they take off. And I take off on my bike because I met them there. Boom. And then we all take off and just go home. God then, damn. Uh, you have a million of these, bro. I do. Would I've... you? Would you rather never never have to shit again or pee again? Ooh, probably shit. Yeah, right. It's too inconvenient. I know it is, and it takes a lot of time, and sometimes my legs go numb because I'm on my phone. Yeah, you get you know on there, I mean? you fucking scrolling on the yeah, ground. Yeah, when I piss, I'm just like, bam, I'm in and out. Yeah. Good. Would you all? Would you? Would you rather always forget who you are, or have everyone forget who you are? I would rather everyone forget who I am. Yeah, right. At least you know what the fuck. Going yeah, on. I'm not a big fame person. I'm not a fame whore. I'm not a attention whore. Yeah. So I, I'd rather people forget it's who I am. It's scary, bro. It is. Fucking doing all that shit. To live your life and not know what's going on is is a scary thing. Yeah. It's a very that. scary thing. I've I've my grandpa had dementia. I've seen people with Alzheimer's. Like it's it's a scary thing. I hope I die before that. Oh shit. Alright. This thing's dying too. <laughs> I'm fucking murdering you, bro. Bet you didn't think it was gonna take this long. Bam. Huh? So we're we're deep in the game. We're gonna deep. do some we're gonna do some current events, but fuck, we're two hours in. Uh <laughs> where can they follow you? What's your what's your Instagram handle? What's your shit? My Instagram, my Twitter, my Facebook, everything's the same from Help a Shell. I just started a Twitch channel too, from Help nice. a Shell. Do you so play in there? 
yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna start recording my twitching, gaming, and I was actually told that I could twitch like my training sessions and stuff too. And da- like, uh, Demetrius Johnson is big in that shit. And yeah, twitch. He is. He's like a king of that shit. Yeah, and so was like Shayna, Shayna Baszler, and like uh, yeah. uh, Jessamyn Duke are big on it too. So like that made me think about it a little bit. But I was, I was like, nah, I don't want to be that nerdy. Yeah, because yeah. I am kind of a nerd. I love video games. I'm such a idiot. But, but bro, if you're fucking good, I'd do that shit. Yeah, and so oh. now I'm like, fuck it. So I'm on my Twitch thing now. From Help a Shell, Instagram from Hell for Shell, uh, All Twitter, shit. everything from Help a Shell. All, all right, simple. guys, you got a fight coming up June 1st. Don't miss it. All right, man, it's going to be fucking fireworks. Thanks okay. for tuning in, guys. Yes. Thank you. All right, man. Don't miss it. Woo!